I think it's working. All right. As the title implies, <laughs> this is going to be a live QA edition. There is some stuff I could work on if, if the questions dry up. But for now, what I'm going to plan on doing is going to YouTube, and then I just realized after I answered one question in the past two or three months on my YouTube channel that I've got a ton of notifications and stuff I've been not keeping up with. Um, uh, what can I say? So, I guess I'll get started. Um, so let's go to this video here, and let's take a look. Uh, <laughs> it's an older one. So, UV Master, hey Mike, I copy and pasted the UVs to my mesh, but it seems I can't change the color of my matte cap on the mesh. I pasted, I copy and, so I copy and pasted the UVs to my mesh, but it seems I can't change the color of my matte cap on my mesh. I pasted my UVs. Is there a way I can paste my UVs and still be able to change my matte cap? Yeah, yes and yes. So let's give that a shot. First, dang, let me roll this back. Um, first thing, is let's go ahead and talk about geometry and matte cap. So I have a cube here going to edit, make poly mesh 3D. So now this is a sculptable mesh. I can change the color on and change the materials on. So if I have materials, we can say, okay, give me this material thing over here. Um, <laughs> hey Lord. And what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and hide this, sorry. Okay, sorry, I gotta wake up too. So what we're doing is we're going into UV Master and we're going to UV some stuff and we're going to copy the UVs back and we're going to change our matte cap color. Uh, colors, of course, are going to be over here. We have standard materials and matte cap materials. Uh, standard materials have lighting or matte cap materials have lighting built in. Standard materials don't. You're going to see some of these matte caps have very strong colors. If we choose one of those and we go into our material modifiers, you're going to see what's driving that color is this image. If you want more information on how to manipulate those matte caps. I took one of ZBrush Guide's Pablo Munoz Gomez uh, PDFs and we went through in video form and we did the stylized rendering uh, walkthrough. And this, this goes way in depth on matte caps, which I don't tend to mess with a ton, but I can show you some basics. So for example, we have matte caps here. I'm going to say, uh, we'll say matte cap white. That's a good enough one. We have poly frame turned on, so that's why it's uh, colorized. So we have an object here that is a poly mesh 3D. Once we make an object that's a poly mesh 3D, we can append other objects here, like a sphere. That's fine. And a sphere and a cube. So here's our sphere and cube. Incidentally, while I'm thinking about this, if you go in here, ZBrush 2023, what's new? They just had a new release of ZBrush, ZBrush 2023.2, which is what we're using. So morph brush history, spotlight mid value, anchor brushes, and snap tools to other sub tools uh, was just released. So for example, let's go ahead and append a cone. So I have a flat surface. So if I have this object here, and I have my, if I hit W on my keyboard and then I hit Y on my keyboard or just touch this little button right here that switches your gizmo to your transpose line, you can now go, you go here. And then you can go down here to contact. I'm gonna say this, but I know I'm still gonna get replies. If you have an older version of ZBrush that isn't 2023.2, what you have in here is not gonna do what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna hit C1, I'm gonna hit apply. That's gonna snap that object to that surface. And also remember, we do have a line in here. So if I just have these turned on and I'm like, okay, I want to align this cone to this cube, select the cube so it stays stationary and then just hit this midline here and use your camera to snap to the sides and you can align and snap surfaces, et cetera, et cetera. So we have objects here, long story short. I'm gonna go ahead and merge these down and we're gonna go into, so you're gonna see I have just these poly groups on here. And I wanna go, and you know what? Let's also make it a little tougher. Let's go in here to geometry, let's hit control D a couple of times. So now we have subdivision history. So I can't natively just hop into Z plugin UV master. It's going to yell at me that I have subdivision history. Luckily there is a work on clone. I can hit that. That will clone off the lowest subdivision level and get ready for subdivision history. So now I can go through here. I'm gonna do a quick uh, group by poly group, group by normals. That's under your poly group menu here. And then you can hit group by normals. That'll give me poly groups here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say control shift, just grab 
half of this, just hit Control W. So now I have polygroups for all my UV seams. I'm going to say, it's not symmetrical, but I will use my polygroups. I'm going to hit Unwrap. I'm going to flatten. Looks good. Unflatten. All right, and while you're in the flatten mode, this is just geometry, so you can manipulate this stuff. Let's go ahead and hit Y on our keyboard to go back into Gizmo mode. You can manipulate this geometry just as you would any other geometry in ZBrush. Uh, so, for example, Control Shift, Control Shift A for visibility, grow all, mask, and invert, move, whatever you want to do, and you're moving your UVs around basically. Uh, and then you can say unflatten. We're going to copy these UVs. We're going to hop back over to our version that has subdivision history and no polygroups, and we're going to paste UVs. So, the original question being. Uh, you can paste the UVs to your mesh, but you can't change the color of your matte cap on the mesh you paste your UVs. First, make sure you have polyframe turned off so you can see, you know, colors happening. Uh, and then, as far as colors go, there's two ways you can color an object. Well, more, more, multiple ways you can color an object, but one way is going in here to, um, you're going to see colorize is turned on. So if you could turn colorize off, it's just going to be vertex color of white, and then you can go through here and change your vertex color, and it's just a preview. If I turn colorize back on, this is the actual color of my verts. This is my poly paint, essentially, which is vert color. So if I go through here and say, okay, this control shift, I always like to do, you can do control shift tap and tap a poly group, but I always like to play it safe and grab a little piece and then control shift A. I'm gonna switch this to red. I'm gonna say color, fill object. We also have, if I control shift drag, that'll invert my selection. You can say, um, sorry, uh, color, it is over here, right? Cause they're, sorry, my brain just turned off. Um, <laughs> There is a geometry, uh, or is it, where is it? Mm, come on, Mike, you got this. Ooh, poly paint, fill color. That makes sense. So the reason why there is a color fill object and a geometry or a tool geometry submenu, poly paint submenu, colorize, fill color. Uh, so we'll change this to blue here and we'll say fill color. Uh, so now this is a vertex color. It hasn't changed the matte cap color. The matte cap color is still just matte cap white. And in fact, if I go and swap this out, it'll, oh, you know what? We don't even have our MRGB turned on, but it still filled it. Interesting. Um, so we have blue uh, vertex color, essentially. Uh, and in fact, if you want to like mask half of this and then go in here to light blue, and then I have a hot key for control alt F. Oh, I was explaining that. So underneath color, fill object, does the same thing as tool geometry, poly paint, fill color. The reason why is if I say fill color over here, I can then go, uh, if I had more subtools, append cylinder, if I had multiple subtools, I could say to all of these subtools, anything I do over here, I can go up to, man, I'm having a hard time today. Uh, repeat to other, oh, apply last action to all subtools. So again, if I have this one selected, I have a blue color, and let's go ahead and turn on colorize so that isn't too confusing. So colorize is turned on. Uh, we wanna fill this with a color. I'm gonna choose purple, and we're gonna go down here to fill color, and then I can come up here to apply last action all subtools, and say okay, and that will fill all my subtools. If I go over here to color fill object, this apply last action all subtools wherever that was, way up here. That won't work because it has any, this button only applies to things that you can do in the tool menu. So anyway, long story short, I'm using, and you know what, let's go ahead and merge this all into one subtool. Here, Control Shift A, Control Alt F is my hotkey for color fill object. Grab this one here, there we go. So now we're just using poly paint. Haven't changed our matte cap yet. So in here we have our material, and then now we have, with any material we have, uh, we can also do MRGB. So if I go through here and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do gold, grab this one, Control Shift A, I'm gonna say yellow with a gold matte cap. The gold is actually built into the color. So if I choose like a, a pink gold, we can go color fill object. That's gonna fill the vertex color and the material at the same time. And that'll end up being the result. If I change this to a white color and change this to RGB, it'll keep the material, but swap out the poly paint or your vertex color. Uh, and again, I just want to do it here. So color fill object. Again, we're just filling with RGB information, vertex color. So now we have our matte cap and then poly paint. 
So going back to matte caps, uh, how to change an actual matte cap color. So if I choose white and white and say color, fill object, uh, oops. And so it didn't fill this material because we didn't have MRGB. So that's color and material fill objects. And so now we have white matte cap and white vertex color for everything in here. Um, you can, here's something you can do. You can go down here to poly paint and you can say poly paint from poly groups and that will take your poly group color and apply it as vertex color to your object. Um, also, if you're like, this is all great, Mike, but get to the original question, how do you change the color on a matte cap? You can go in here and you can swap this. This is what's driving the lighting and the material properties is just this um, image right here, basically. You can load in another image that has a color. Uh, you can also go in here to base and choose a color. And then I think base, or maybe it's depth A, intensity A, intensity B. Maybe base is not the right thing. Let's do, let's try A, red, B, and it's gonna show you very quickly that, uh, here's so intensity A is giving it more of a red tint. It's basically taking this image and tinting it with red to give you a red result. If we take intensity B down to zero, it's black. Uh, and it seems like, it seems like intensity A is doing all the heavy lifting. Intensity B is not doing much. There's, oh, hue A and hue B. Hmm. Let's see. Intensity A, hue B. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. Intense saturation A, saturation B. Anyway, this is how, let me find a matte cap I kind of know how to use. Um, and matte caps are also different than basic materials. So matte cap gray, same deal. I think matte cap red wax has some extra bits in there. Red clay, red do I not even have matte cap red wax? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Never noticed that. Anyway, you can use these little swatches and then these sliders in order to change a matte cap color. Okay, sorry, that's a weird one. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, <laughs> well, I know some stuff. I'm not a matte cap expert, so I kind of stumbled at the end there, but you get the idea, I think. So I'll keep going back through my notifications here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Thank you, thank you. I was using ID maps and Marmoset and some of the colors were too close to each other. Marmoset wouldn't differentiate. Any chance you have the swatch tool laying around? I do, and I also have another option. So this whole thing we're talking about here is, uh, we'll, we'll use this, well, we're gonna have such exciting examples. Let me bring in something that's interesting to look at. Intro. Mm. This is something we were playing with. Um, military heavy. Just a miscellaneous concept sculpt. Okay, that'll work. So control shift. I'm going to grab, let's say delete other. All right, so we got a little sci-fi helmet looking thing. And I want to go through and start assigning material IDs using my vertex color. So what I can do is when I go to bake this, I can say, okay, what do I want to be steel? I'm gonna say this right here. Actually, I'm gonna fill everything first. I'm gonna have a nice base coat. Uh, and these can be separate subtools too. You could separate these all out and then go in subtool by subtool and color fill. This is all one object, so we'll just deal with it. Um, so you could go through here and you could just choose a color. So I'm gonna choose a vaguely red color. If you want more information on what color that is specifically, you can go in here to color and you have your RGB stuff. Here's other color selection options. So ideally for the robot eyes who are gonna be looking at your colors, going in here and saying, okay, 255, zero, zero is pure, pure red. There's no ambiguity, because if you start doing like, oh, you know, R64 and G64 and R255, now all of a sudden it gets to be, not a, I mean, this is fine. It's a totally valid color just like anything else. But if you choose this color and then later on you choose a color that's like this and a color that's like this and a color that's like this, uh, these values aren't shifting very much. So when a robot goes in and looks at your values and then you change the tolerance level, it's gonna bleed. Your mask that should be just this color is gonna bleed into the mask that is this color, is gonna bleed into the mask that is this color, and it's gonna bleed into the mask that is that color because they're just too similar. Um, so what you want to do is you want to be careful and say, okay, I just, you know, 250, you look, you're basically looking at numbers more than you're looking at color, but you can start with red. And then if I go down here to blue, I'm going to say zero, zero, 255, um, oops, MRGB, unmask, color, 
uh, you know what? The macap gray is not going to work. Let's get Shander 4 color fill object there. Okay, so we can just fill with blue here, and then if I want to go to red, you know, 255 zero, 0 we'll grab this piece here. So every single object on here that I want to be like, okay, red is going to be my material ID for dark steel or whatever. Um, that'll be what that is. And then, of course, I can switch just going around the color wheel. So here's red, green's a good one, 255. Uh, yeah, so we'll say the all these things need to be a, a very separate material ID. There's an easier way to do that in ZBrush. You can go in here to Z Plugin, and you in here underneath the Z Color. If you click that, that'll open up a cool little window here, and you can use these as color swatches. So as I go through and select, I can say Set Color, and all of these are very mathematically separated. So you're going to see. Uh, the R, G, and B values as I go through here is 255, 0, 0, 255, 0, 0, 0, 255. So these are all, and this, uh, I don't use this very often, but I think you can go in here and change it to be different swatches. Like there's, you can pull in all sorts of cool stuff, different types of colors. Um, also in here, where is it? Again, I don't go in here very often. There's a way... No, uh, use your brain, Mike. What is it? Oh, here, here's the other. You can uh, no see. Uh, right click, drag. No, drag off. No. Oh, here we go. Yeah, maybe interface is it grabbing stuff from my interface or images hmm I thought there was a color picker in here and I think there is I think if you drag off of here it will select colors but all right plus okay I actually need to go in and read the documentation on this thing because again I don't oh there it is is it oh that's still hmm anyway they read the documentation on this I'm sure there's amazing things you can do with it the one amazing thing I'm going to talk about is the ability to go through here and choose mathematically separated values, hit set color, and then you can just grab this, control shift A, control alt F is my hotkey for color fill, and then you can use that. Um, I have a thing I pull in, I hit the comma key, go into my tool menu, and I have a simple color swatches. If you want this in that location, go into Max on ZBrush 2023, or wherever you have ZBrush installed, C program files, ZBrush. Uh, go in here to Z tools, and this is where your lightbox stuff is. So all of these are the Z tools. If you go out of here and you go into Z alphas or Z textures or Z projects, these are what shows up when you hit the comma key on your keyboard to bring up your lightbox, and then you go through these tabs. There's your brushes, your text textures, your alphas. So you can put this tool in here and double click it. It'll load up that tool for you. And then when I do, it's just a color swatch that I have over here. I'll put it over here in my safe, the little safe action area. And I want to sample from this. So I'm going to hop out of edit mode. That's going to just say always switch. That's going to drop this to the canvas. Then I can hop over here to my tool, drag this out, go into edit mode, hit F to frame. And now I can hit C on my keyboard to sample. You're going to see it's going to change this primary color here to whatever I sample. And you can also sample here. You can just go through it and sample from previously filled stuff if you don't want to go over here. So that's another way. So for you to have that, I will give you a link. Let me do a search for swatches. Simple color swatch. Share, copy link. There you go. So you can download that. It's just a polyplane with a texture applied, I think. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Oh, no, maybe not. I guess it's just polypaint. No, I don't have it selected. Select it. <laughs> texture map. There it is. Yeah, it's a texture map applied to a polyplane uh, in order to get you that. So anyway, that's another way you can go through and you can fill colors and then you can get nice separated material IDs. Now, when you go to bake in Substance Painter or Marmoset, make sure your material IDs aren't, aren't set to material or something or any other thing other than vertex color because your vertex color is your poly paints you're going to be transferring your poly paint information to a text bake that to a texture map that is your material id map <sighs> mm. 
Uh, question. Hey, Mike, good to see you again. What primitives do you use typically when you're making teeth and claws? A, a sphere. So let me explain that. If I go into load tool and we go in here to the reptile creature, I'm just, I'm just pulling. I'm just new boot goofing. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say, okay, we've got a creature, a creature with no teeth and no spit. There we go. So just a creature thing. Uh, and I want to put teeth on here. So first I want to use IMM brushes and these all have subdivision history because I'm working smart and I like having subdivision history. These don't have subdivision history. These are just decimated, but um, let's say that everything did. What I like to do is at the very top, you're going to see this is named reptile creature. That's because when I save a Z tool, tool save as is going to rename this. If you go up here to file save as, uh, that's going to save a Z project and it won't do this. But if you do a tool save as it will, if you want to avoid that, for two reasons. You can go in here to insert, just grab any shape, and now we have a star in here. I'm going to sh use the bent up arrow to put it at the top. I'm going to go into transparency mode. I'm going to scale this down, and we're just going to kind of hide this in our scene somewhere. So, cool thing about this is when I go to save this as, and I'm just going to save this on my desktop as whatever. Um, there we go. It's going to rename that top subtool as whatever, but these will remain. So I'm going to rename this to head. And this is important too. If you're going to be saving files, then you use like head underscore high so that you can send out a high res that will have the same name as your low res so that you can use namespaces to bake high to low. Um, you don't want to have your subtools renamed. The other cool thing about this name catcher essentially is it's just a null object sitting in space that you can turn on X symmetry for. And it doesn't have subdivision history. So if I have other objects showing and I want to drag out an IMM brush onto another surface that has subdivision history, you can use this technique, which is just having something that doesn't have subdivision history in your scene that you can use. So uh, you can go to BI brush insert IMM primitives and you can go through here. Speaking of favorite primitives, these are not my favorite primitives. These are just happen to ship with ZBrush. Now there's good stuff in there that you can use, but I have a primitive list that I like to use that is like z-spheres of varying uh, big poly counts, cube, cube mid, plane, plane mid, rivet, ring, uh, ring based on the camera, noodle, a bend curve. These are all things I use for very, I don't really use pill flat anymore, but most of the stuff I use off often. So let me go ahead and give you that. That would be excuse me, IMM base primitives, share copy link there you go you can download this now notice when I hit my B menu I didn't go into the comma key and go into brush and go over here to where I would store my light box brushes that I use every once in a while like uh, military uh, combo is there anything cool in here not really um, Miscellaneous. <laughs> okay, look, I got. I now I have some miscellaneous screw IMMs in here. Uh, I didn't do that for this. All I did was hit B. Well, I didn't even do that. I just hit a hotkey, and then I had my custom brush. And in fact, if I go to B I, that narrows it down for the brush. All the sub or all the brushes that start with I, and then I have IMM base primitives. This is my own custom brush sitting in here when I started up ZBrush. If you want it to end up in there, instead of putting it where your light box stuff goes, which is in here, Max on ZBrush 2023, Z, oops, Z brushes. You know, you can put your own folders in here or you can add brushes to these folders and you can use your light box. Instead, I'm gonna go down here to Z startup, brush presets, and then if you save anything in here, everything in here loads up with ZBrush. If you want to mess with your default, default Z brushes, so for example, if I go in here to Z data, um, brush presets, you can see I have a brush presets copy. The first thing you want to do, take this brush presets folder, control C, control V, have a backup because once you change these, you're gonna to have to reinstall ZBrush if you want to get your original brush functionality back. So save off a copy just in case. And then under your brush presets, for example, um, I always switch my smooth, my the smooth brush that ZBrush ships with is right here. Um, if I want to override that functionality of that, for example, if I go in here to brush, what I'll do, is if I hold down shift, that switches to my smooth brush, smooth brush modifiers. I have that set to weighted smooth mode of one. So whenever I start up ZBrush and I hold down shift, 
it has a smooth brush that is already set the weighted smooth mode of one, which is smooth stronger. It's just how I like to roll. And I don't want to have to do that every time I use a smooth brush, every time I open up ZBrush. So what I'll do is I'll hold down shift, change any values I want for any brush, and then say brush save as, and then I will save over exactly what we talked about, which I just closed because I'm not smart this morning. Uh, ZBrush, ZBrush, 2023. Um, Z startup. Nope. Yeah, Z startup. We'll just bring in. Nope, sorry. Uh, Let's see, ZBrush 2023, uh, Z Data brush presets. These are gonna save over your default brushes that load up with ZBrush. And then ZBrush 2023, uh, Z Startup brush presets is just an extra folder that'll bring in extra brushes. So when you load up ZBrush, the next time you copy things in there, you'll see they're down here. So like Move Accu is Move with Accu Curve turned on, Orbs Cracks, Z Modeler Slice, etc. So IMM base primitives, Alt E M on my keyboard. And then to answer your question, I go in here to Z sphere, maybe 16. I have my null selected with X symmetry turned on. And then I'll go through here and I'll just like scale this out and scale this down and then go through and maybe use my move Accu brush. So move brush is just going to give you uh, also I have, so this is a custom menu. You want more information on all of this stuff in here is a intro to ZBrush here. It's 50 videos or so of basic ZBrush functionality. You can check that out. And it'll tell you how to do custom menus and custom interface stuff. Um, in here, I don't remember what I was talking about, but yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, move Accu. So if I go in here to move brush, you're gonna see I have curve, Accu curve, well, move brush, I don't have Accu curve turned on and it kind of just does a kind of a soft fall off. Uh, I go in here and turn AccuCurve on. That allows me to pull to points. Uh, it's good for nails and teeth, but also good for like pulling out hard surface boxes and stuff. Just making sure you're pulling out corners. So anyways, we pull out here and then we go through here and we mush in and this will be, and then smooth. And now we've got uh, fangs. And then if I want to copy these fangs, I can hold down control and drag out a copy and then you know, do whatever I want to kind of maneuver these teeth into place. Obviously, you can make your own teeth IMMs. You also have a BC brush chisel creature and brush chisel 3D and brush chisel organic. And in here, you have teeth. Now, these are vector displacement alphas, so you have to drag through a mesh in order to drag out teeth. So it's not an IMM brush, but I like teeth that are gonna, I can, I can assign a separate material to. Because generally speaking, I'm baking things off and putting them into a engine. I'm not just 3D printing stuff. So this is a little, number one, it's easier to manipulate teeth as a separate object. I can always go down here to like, again, my move brush or my move Accu brush, and then go in here to auto masking, turn on topological, change my range. You also have, if I hit the B key on my keyboard, M for move brushes or brushes that start with M, you do have a move topological in here. So BMT will grab that. All it is is the move brush with this button turned on and the range dialed in. What this will allow you to do is move these things separately. So I can just start moving one and it'll ignore everything that isn't vert welded to it. Uh, you can also use mass by polygroups and change these to like uh, polygroups, auto groups. So that's in your polygroups menu somewhere in here. Uh, and then now this is going to be tricky. So if I turn off topological, do mask my polygroups, you're going to see, okay, great, I can move the purple one. But this one isn't moving because it's not purple. Every single one of these got a different polygroup. So what I like to do is geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld across the X, and now I can move my polygroup on both sides um, symmetrically and still have separate polygroups. Or you can hit, make these all the same polygroup and just use topological. Um, once you've done that, if you have awesome teeth that you like to use, you can save these as IMM brushes. So we can go in here or, oh, also something to note, these teeth are still stuck to our original, uh, star back here. So if I want to, and while you're doing, I, I won't talk about that. So we can just grab the teeth out of here, control shift, visibility selector, uh, sub tool split hidden. So sub tool split hidden or whatever, split un unhidden. I'm going to move this down. We'll rename it because we're good people. Teeth. And then now we have our star null node. Uh, like I was saying before, if you really love these teeth, uh, one thing I might do is just say like zero mesh half, depth size down to zero, and just knock these back a bit, simplify the geometry if you want. Um, 
And that, of course, is underneath your geometry zero measure here. So half, uh, depth slice down to zero just gives you nice even quads, which in the case of teeth, I don't know if you'd want that, but you can play around with those settings. Now to give you new geometry. If you're in love with this whole set of teeth, you can first do a quick save. Go to, I don't know if you can see this on your screen, but go up here, hit the nine key on your keyboard or just hit the quick save button in the upper right. Because what can sometimes happen with IMM brushes, it'll be a little bit crashy sometimes. So uh, I want to save this set of teeth so I can do the bottom set. Well, you don't even have to sit and do an IMM brush. You can just say duplicate and then go down here to geometry. Um, nope, deformation mirror in the y direction because if i turn on my floor you're going to see green y is up x is left to right z is forward to back so we're oriented in space so i can go in here to mirror in the y direction i will mirror those teeth in the y direction then i can just go zoop and scooch it down here uh you're going to see i went to unmash mesh center which that was quick which uh you know, does the local, I don't want to get into this, but it goes into the local symmetry of both sides because I have X symmetry turned on. If I tap X on my keyboard underneath transform, we're toggling X symmetry on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap X to turn that off temporarily. I'm going to hold down alt and I'm going to say, go to unmash mesh center. And then I'm going to say reset so that, and I'm holding down alt to unlock my gizmo setting. So I can go through here and just basically reset this to the middle of the object and then orient it to world space. Tap X to turn X symmetry back on. And now I'm back where I started. And now I've got teeth that again, I can use move topological to kind of scooch around and place. Now let's say I want to have these teeth available um, to put on any creature. So what I can do is I can merge these teeth together. I have a hotkey for that, but yours will be right here, merge down. If you want to store a hotkey, just control alt, click any item interface. You'll see up here at the top, it says press any key combination. Alt E is what I use, I think. Sometimes I forget my hotkeys right in the middle of explaining them. It's muscle memory. I don't really remember what it is, but anyway, we have my teeth here. So I want to use this on another thing. Remember, quick save. And then and just look, you know, you want to orient your camera to the way you want it drawn out on your mesh. So you can say B, create insert mesh new. So now we have a new insert mesh. So if I delete these teeth out of my scene and I go in and I, you know, load up my teeth brush, which I think there is brushes in here that have that, like insert IMM, dragon bones. I hit M on my keyboard or you can go up here and you can kind of search through. I like to hit M. There's horns ribs, teeth upper, teeth lower, boom, right there. So if I want to do teeth upper from here, I can again, let's go down to my null node and then right down the middle, just drag these out and there we go. If I want to use, and then you can just move these into place. If I want to use my brush, it's right here, insert mesh. So I can go through here and I can, now this one, I have it so when I drag it out, it's again, it's going to look at me just like I had and then you can kind of start with these teeth. Uh, and if you look, oh, and it, when we drag in an IMM, it automatically masks all the other subtools. So I can just do a quick split mask points. That's under your subtool split menu. And then you can just split those teeth out. However, if I alt tap back here, these teeth are still stuck to the star. So I can say, grab the star and say split hidden. And then now the whatever nodes at the top. And then we've got our teeth and our teeth. It, it will inherit the name that we dragged it out on. So we can just again, rename this. Yay. So, teeth, IMM, Z remesher, downloading teeth, making your own teeth brush. Yeah, okay. Um, say that you're a busy brush teacher. Thank you, ever. Thank you, Clay Sculpting, for the kind words. Uh, hey, Morpheus, I'm doing good. Um, Lux says, is there a way to make multiple slime bridges? I only seem to do one at a time. Maybe I'm being dumb, but I cannot seem to do multiple slime bridges. Um, Oh, organic wiring for a mech. That's a good idea for slime brushes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's give that a test. Um, okay, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna go into load tool here, and I'm gonna go into sample files. Let's do let's do some wiring with slime brush. Now this isn't super organic wiring, but I'm gonna say delete other. Okay, so we've got a mech and we want to do some wiring. Oh, if you want to see, oh, there's, I've got a, we got more. 
Okay, that's me. Um, if I go in here and I say wires, twisted wire bundle, Z-sphere wire rig posing. I want to say even with this example specifically, oh, you know what it might be too? Controlling curves. Hair curve control, twist controls, your brush curves. Oh, there it is. Curves helper. Z spheres control where IMM curves go for chains and etc. Uh, yeah, check this one out. Copy link address. So that's something that might be of interest to you as far as like putting geometry where you want your curves to go. Uh, speaking of that IMM brush, my special one, I have a bend curve and I love to use this one. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry here. I will drag out a curve here. I'm going to say split mass points. I'm going to say W and you're going to see my IMM brush and this is oriented right down the axis of this. If I want to reset it, say your axis was off, just hold down Alt and tap. That'll set it to the axis of this object. You can also go to Unmatched Mesh Center. So it'll inherit the direction of your object and go to the middle. Neat. Uh, you can also hold down Alt and you can thin out your wire here if you want. And then I like to go into this little gear icon and say bend curve and then here you have a little curve at the beginning at the end and then you have a resolution slider you can dial up so now you have a bunch of little things you can go through and bend twist uh, or whatever so you can go through here and you can use you can use scale if you want to kind of fatten it up along or you can twist along the all sorts of cool stuff you can do with this one now there is also in 2023.2, so again, if you're not on the very latest version of ZBrush, you won't have this, but there is a BA brush anchor brush. So you can go through here, and as I'm using this brush, it's basically just tapping and creating two points, and between these two points, you can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think rotate is selected by default, so when I have two points in here, I can just rotate between these two points. So I can just kind of walk down this object and use my anchor brush to go through and kind of rotate stuff around. So, oh, and it's not just set, it's not just rotate. You can go in here to scale. So if I want to scale between the beginning and the end of here, I can use that as my anchor or I can use this one as my anchor and you can kind of scale or inflate is another cool one. I want to inflate, thin it out, fatten it up, as opposed to going in here with like your inflate brush or your smooth brush, you can smooth as you go and then inflate as you go. Also BS, spiral is a fun one. You can go in here and you can twist geometry. You can hold down Alt and twist in a direction or let go of Alt, twist in another direction. Very, get some very Tim Burton stuff going. Um, what was I talking about? Slime bridge. <laughs> okay, so we'll delete this off. Go to solo mode. Okay, so slime bridge. Uh, slime bridge for organic wiring. This, this one is too heavy. I am going to be a complainer. Uh, sorry. I'm going to bring in a little bit of a lighter version of that. Yeah, block every fine. Delete other. Okay. Ah, there we go. So, um, you know, I want to do slime bridge. So I'm going to go through here. Again, we've talked about this. I'm going to go into my custom menu, grab a sphere, and we're going to put a little... Um, at the beginning of my slime bridge here and then I'm gonna hold down control and drag out a copy so we have two objects that I want to connect with my slime bridge um, and now if I want to grab both those objects just control shift tap and then I'll grab the poly groups for those objects that I just inserted it's not real obvious that they're different but there you go a little easier to see so again we're gonna say split hidden and we're gonna turn everything on turn caps lock off get a drink of water These are all necessary steps to do this. So now we're going to go through here and I'm going to mask one side of this. Incidentally, whenever I say incidentally, it means I'm going to my YouTube channel <laughs> so I can go to, that was a 2022 thing, right? ZBrush 2020, oh, was it 2020? Oh, it was a 2023 thing. Uh, slime bridge all the new stuff in 2023 except for this one this dynamic symmetry let me explain that real quick because when I did this video 
they released a new version right after I made the video that has slightly different functionality. That's much better. Um, so for example, I'm just going to talk about this real quick. So in here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab a, a cylinder here. So I'm going to grab the cylinder on here. We're using IMM. We're going to go ahead and say split mass points. And those two cylinders here have their own axis of symmetry. So if I go through here and I want to scale them, I'm going to hit W and I'm going to scale these, right? However, when I start scaling, it's going to go way away from the world axis and way towards the world axis. Well, I want to scale it on its own local axis so I can scale it where they are in space, right? So that's where this comes into play. You can turn on LSIM. However, by default, dynamic is going to be turned on. What dynamic does is tell it, use the gizmo as my axis of symmetry. So you can have arbitrary work planes in ZBrush. Totally awesome. However, by default, if I turn on LSIM and I want to scale on the local axis here, it's going to use this where my gizmo is and the orientation of my gizmo to dictate where the center of the world is. So now this one's going to scale it. This one will scale fine on its local axis because the gizmo is determining that is the local axis for the entire subtool. So what you want to do is come up here and turn off dynamic. What this mode does is allow you to scale on the local axis of the object move, scale, or rotate on the local axis of the object. So now I can scale out. So long story short, IMM brush something in here, turn on LSIM, and then you can scale on the, using the bounding box of the local axis of the object that's on either side. Um, however, sometimes if I go through here, I'm going to turn off X symmetry. I'm going to grab this one here. We're going to say uh, delete hidden. So I'm going to hit W, and you're going to see we have a gizmo on here. So if I go through here and I kind of move, scale, rotate, whatever I want to do, and then I turn on like, okay, I want to have, I want to sculpt, let's hit control D a couple times. I want to, <laughs> this is a gross object to do this with, but that's fine. So I have my gizmo here and I'm like, well, I want to have symmetry across here. I want to be able to sculpt on one side of the object and have it show up on the other side. That's where your gizmo comes in. Your gizmo is oriented right down the center of this object here. So if I turn on dynamic, now it's going to look at your gizmo as Here's your Y up, here's your Z forward, here's your X left to right. So when I turn on, tap X for X symmetry, now it's using the gizmo as my um, center plane. So now I have symmetry on here. Yay! So there's a lot of functionality. You just gotta know what those three things mean. Uh, but I was talking about slime bridge. Stop getting distracted, Mike. So slime bridge, if I remember correctly, because I don't use it a ton, uh, we're going to turn off dynamic LSIM and just have X symmetry turned on. So we're going to say mask this side, mask that side. We're going to go over here to geometry. It's not thick skin, although thick skin's pretty cool too. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a slime bridge. So I'm going to say slime bridge, uh, one or two masked areas in order to work. I think I have them right. Oh, maybe I can just do two. So mask, mask. We can always mirror too if that's the case. Yeah, okay, that's okay. So, you know what? That's fine. I'm gonna grab these here. Split hidden. Uh, I'm gonna just make sure I'm not accidentally toggling off mic, okay. So, slime bridge. Mask, mask. It is semi-resolution dependent, so depending on the resolution of your object will also determine how your slime bridge is, bridge is generated. I like to do, not a, so branches and capillaries end up doing like you have a main section and then you have branches that come off the main section and you have capillaries that come off those main branches and you end up getting something like this. Totally cool, but usually I want it a little bit simpler. So I'm going to say bridges of 20. Now that doesn't mean it's going to make 20 bridges necessarily. It's just a value that you dial in to determine how few or how many. So if I crank this up, um, it's not going to give me 353, but it will give me more. If I crank it down, it's not necessarily going to give me just five, but in this case, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, yeah, give me four. But you know what I mean? It's giving you less. Uh, also, tension up so that they go, I think, tension up. Yeah, so the tension make, means it goes in a straight line. So um, let me see if I take tensions down. This is just kind of like, it's not taking gravity into consideration necessarily. So in this case, I might just do tension at 100 and then go through here and just kind of either drape these down or another thing you can try control shift tap in order to grab your slime bridge starting and ending points um, control tap to mask it control shift tap to bring everything else back 
go in here to your dynamics menu and you can say turn gravity on let's change that, change that gravity down to a very low value because this can be sometimes powerful and then we'll say run simulation and that'll actually drape these things we can also crank up our firmness on here so it just kind of does a general drape here we can even turn on self collision a little bit maybe firmness down there we go. So now we can have, say we have organic wiring that we want to drape between here. Now you may be thinking, well, these aren't really wires. They kind of deflated and blah, blah, blah. This goes back to the controlling curves video I sent out. I can use these as paths for my wiring or my organic wiring, whatever I want to do, just to kind of free it up. How I'm going to do that is you're going to see we have polygroups for every single one of these slimes. So we have our slime starting endpoint. I'm going to control shift drag, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. I'm going to use this geometry as paths to control um, an IMM curve brush. If I want to straighten these things out, I can go into my deformation menu. Again, in my custom menu is where I have this stuff too, but like I can do polish by feature, open circle, and just tap that, and that'll smooth out those transitions. Also over here. Um, you can also just use polish. A feature is a polygroup border, but since these are just all single polygroups, it just basically smooths them out really nicely. So now, how do I use these things to control where I would put like a BC or a BI brush insert, IMM curve, M if I want to put like a, a hose or whatever. I just want them to travel down the path of this. So I'm going to go in here to my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M. Z modeler. I can hover over an edge. I can hold down space bar. I can say polygroup poly loop. Then I can tap one side here and it's going to go all the way down to the end. And I'm going to hold down. I'm going to tap the other side. I'm going to tap alt. Whoa. Oh, these are connected. <laughs> oh. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, I want to have these all on the same screen here, but I don't want them connected. You can just separate them out and say split hidden. That's fine, and we can just do two passes. It's okay. I uh, I forgive you, connected polygroup. So polygroup polyloop, I'm gonna tap here, tap Alt to change it, I'm gonna tap here to make a polygroup, and then I'm gonna tap Alt, and that's gonna, as I'm has my tablet held down, I can just cycle through polygroups here. Uh, and then same for this one. You, and then you, and then same for this one. You, and then you. So now if I Control Shift tap between those two polygroups, I'll grab both of them. Control shift drag, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And now I can merge this one back in and it won't be connect, uh, will be connected. But it won't be connected because when I merged, hold on, hold on. There's two ways to ground this and I should have done this while I was thinking about it. So when I merge, you're gonna see UV is turned on so it'll maintain your UVs, but weld is turned off. So these things shouldn't be welded. However, when I go to here to smooth, you're like, well, why isn't it smoothing apart? If you go into brush, smooth brush modifiers, you're going to see min connected is set to three. Um, change that to one, and now you can smooth border edges. So now you can see those are not welded. Alternatively, what I could have done way back before we got to this point, when we saw the tubes and these were connected, you can always go into geometry, modify topology, and you can unweld groups border, and that would have unwelded that as well. Oops. But anyway, so Z modeler brush, polygroup, polygroup, U, and U, control shift tap, and uh, we'll just grab a little piece of all these. Give me this. You know what? We're going to get rid of this one. That's easier. Delete hidden. So now, why are you doing this, Mike? I now have a path that I can frame. So if I go in here to my stroke menu, uh, we have curve things functions in here. So uh, one of these is frame mesh. I want to frame, turn these other options off, my just my polygroups border. So I can hit frame mesh. Now it's going to drop a curve right down the middle of here. So if I want to go through here and say BC brush curve tube, I can swap these out with tubes. Or I can say BI brush insert IMM curve, hit M on my keyboard. Uh, hose, you can swap these out with hoses. And so now we have, and then if you want to get rid of these, you should be able to like tap away but since these are such small objects that might be difficult just go in here to curve functions delete that'll get rid of the uh, curves you're also going to notice uh, number one they're sitting right on top so if you wanted those to be embedded in the middle i'll show you how to do that but also if you want to separate these out the original curve geometry is masked when we did our imm curve so all you got to do is go down here to split mass points run mass points doesn't matter and now your hoses are on their own subtool 
and then your path is on the other. So we'll go ahead and delete this. And then let's talk about, what was I gonna talk about? Framing, um, shoot. My brain was working and then it wasn't. Um, I was framing stuff, we are dropping in curves. <laughs> oh, the depth of the curve. So BC brush curve, no, it doesn't matter. BI brush insert. Uh, again, you can swap, oh, you can also, you can swap out anything. So we can go in here and say, I want a bike chain. Now we don't have the curves in there anymore. So we got to frame our mesh again. Now we can drop a bike chain down all these. And then I can say, oh wait, I want the bike chain to be in the middle of my path. So we can go down here to brush. depth and this is where we can change our depth value so we can change that and then tap to update and then you can kind of finagle this so that uh looks like a value of zero that makes sense would probably put it right down the middle of our little path here and then again you can go back in here and say delete and then split mass points and then now you have whatever you want um for that did that answer the question uh, okay, multiple slime bridges only so you do one at a time. Um, okay, so that was multiple branches from a slime bridge, but to answer your question from way back, uh, I don't think I can. I, can. I don't think I can say like like we did originally if I control drag out copies of these. I'm like, okay, I want to slime you, slime you to you, you to you, you to you, and then I try to use slime bridge. It, I mean, the very first thing it did was yell at me. So I guess the answer is no. But hopefully um, the other stuff was interesting too. Slime bridge. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Uh, tricks or workflows for belt and rope knots. Yeah, let's do a belt. Delete all. Let's do belt and knots. There's a couple different ways to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and load up another tool. Hmm, what's a good one? I made a bunch of stuff recently, it seems, but I'm, I'm in an old folder now and I'm just unenthusiastic about these objects. Now, yeah, who cares? Okay, so you got a base mail. And on this base mail, uh, I have a base mail with subdivision history. If I'm gonna be adding stuff to it, I might just duplicate them off, say, you know, drop down to subject level two, delete higher, delete lower, geometry, modify, topology, mirror, and weld, and just have a working object that I can do what I need to, which is like put belts on there, tie knots and ropes and stuff like this. So if I want to put a belt on him, one way I might go about that is hit control W on my keyboard. So I'm in polyframe mode and I might just uh, go through here and say control shift slice and then hold down control shift and hold down space bar, turn on brush radius, and then I might just slice where I want this belt geometry to go. If it's too big, make it smaller, and now I've got a belt across here. If I hold down control shift, I can grab the purple, and then say geometry modify topology delete hidden, auto groups, uh, poly groups, auto groups, control shift tap, again, delete hidden. So now I have an object here. So we've already talked about deformation, polish by feature, open circle, That'll really smooth that geometry out. And we've already talked about zero measure half, depth size down to zero, nice even quads. So between those two things, I can very quickly get a belt type geometry. And then I can go through here and say Z model brush, BZM. Um, you can do mirror and weld too across the X axis, turn on X symmetry. When you zero mesh and have X symmetry turned on, it'll make it automatically symmetrical, which is nice. Q mesh, polygroup ball. And now I have a belt. And the other cool thing about the polish by features function is uh, we now have a polygroup border. So it will keep those nice and crispy as we polish this down. Um, this geometry in the middle, I can always go through here and say insert single edge loop. I can hold down alt and get rid of those. Uh, and in fact, if I even wanted to start with the purple, just control shift tap to isolate the purple here, delete hidden, and then you just pull this back out and just get the same geometry on both sides. Uh, now when you're doing that, be careful, because I do want to go through here, down here to display properties, you see I have double turned on, if I turn that off, you're going to see, oh, my normals are flipped, just hit flip, and that'll flip them back, and then of course, polish by feature, so we have a belt, um, now this isn't a great belt, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's the beginning of one, it's the beginning of a belt, I'm not going to oversell it, so if I want to 
um, have you know a belt that goes underneath and then this part goes over the top that's a little bit trickier um, one way you can do that is let's do this let's say I'm gonna turn off X symmetry because it's not gonna be symmetrical anymore I'm gonna say bevel edge loop complete I'm just gonna pull a bevel through here and then I'm gonna say Q mesh a single poly I'm just gonna push that back that'll just make it so now I can overlap these so I'm gonna hold down W and then control drag down the mask as I go and I'm gonna say you go on the inside and then same thing on this side you go on the outside and now I can go through here I can say Q mesh a single poly I can Q mesh this out and just keep tapping to keep Q meshing out or if, if things start getting sticky switch it from Q mesh to extrude same thing as Q mesh only they don't Q mesh wants to do a little bit of extra functionality that's really cool don't get me wrong it's awesome but if you don't want that then extrude is fine too and then this one we'll just say extrude all the way out and then we can say insert multiple edge loops uh, we can even say keep oop, keep polygroup if we want and then you can just go through here and divide this up however you want to do it now my polygroups are all busted but polygroup group by normals hey we got everything back so now we have a belt uh, B I brush insert I M M clothing hit M on your keyboard buckle type go ahead and say split mass points so now we have a belt here yoink so now we have the semblance we have the beginnings of a belt now on this belt itself if I go through here and I hit D for dynamic which is going to turn on geometry dynamic subdivision so if I hit D it's going to toggle that Yes, toggle that on and then shift D will turn it off. This is a smooth subdiv preview. So if I go down here to crease, I can say, hey, you're just kind of melting my object. I want to crease those polygroups I have. So you can go in here to say crease PG and now those will keep those nice and crispy. But now it's just too sharp. It's too CG. So we can say, okay, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. What that's going to do, or crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. What that's going to tell ZBrush is, hey, Give me a preview of what my geometry would look like if I hit subdivide three times, hit uncrease all, and then subdivide it one more time. That's what these two numbers are telling it. Crease level is three, and then after three subdivides, it'll turn off. Smooth subdiv of four, it will give you a preview of what your object would look like smooth subdivide four times, but uncreased at the third, at the third time. Now you're going to see we have a very sharp fall off here. That's because we have a polygroup border there and it went ahead and creased it for me because I said crease PG, it just did what I asked it to. You can go in here to your Z modeler brush and say crease edge, hold down alt, and then we can just uncrease those edges. Or, because I like to always go in here and I just like to hit crease PG, I'm going to go through here, I'm gonna hit shift D to turn off dynamic. Um, ooh, this isn't gonna work great because if I want this, well, it'll work fine. Let's say I want both of these to be rounded edges instead of hard edges and I want to use crease PG. If I hold down control shift, here's a function. Um, I can, well, you already know how to do this. We've, we just did this poly group, poly loop. You can just hold down alt and tap and now you can change the entire poly loop for this. You can also go in here to select lasso, control shift tap, control shift drag, select lasso. If you select an edge here, it'll actually select the edge ring. If you have select rectangle, it just does poly group selections. So that's a little function built in to select lasso. So you can use that to your advantage, control W. Now we have a polygroup all the way around the middle and then inside and outside. So if I say uncrease all and then crease PG and then hit D, now we have the rounded version. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So now, more belts. So let's do shift D here and um, so let's say I want to move this thing around. I already know I can set my polygroups however I want just by using angle or it's easy enough, right? Uh, but I also maybe want to use polygroups to move stuff around. Instead of going through here and trying to be, okay, let me mask this and unmask this and uh, I'm losing my mind. Just go through here and say polygroup polyloop. I want to grab you and you. Oops, let's just make those both the same polygroup here. And then I could say transpose. Uh, polygroup all. You just tap on here and then that'll switch over to transpose and then you just move these things around. Again, easy enough to get your polygroups back. Um, but at least now you can move stuff around uh, a little bit easier and just tap alt to give that a new polygroup and then transpose. So if that's useful for you at all, that's generally what I end up doing. Now, you might want a hole down the middle of these. One way to do that, let's go ahead and say, um, let's do our little trick here. W and then on this side I'm going to do auto groups because anything that's not vert welded visibly will have a let's go ahead and turn on double 
we'll have an inside and an outside, and then this is all the middle. So now I can again, uncrease all crease BGD for dynamic. So now we've got our belt going. Uh, now I want holes through my belt. <gasps> I'll be honest, when I'm putting holes into curved surfaces, I usually tend to want to do let zero mesh do the heavy lifting. So in, in, in lieu of me going through here and saying, okay, insert multiple edge loops, keep poly group, I'm going to do an uncrease all just so it doesn't crease anything. So I can put an edge right down the middle and then I can go through here and do like a split point here. The caveat being I got to go in here on the backside and do a split point, which is totally fine. You know, I can, I can finagle this so i and i'm also beholden to my geometry where my geometry is is where i have to split the point so then i can go through here and then we, now this is where we want to do a q mesh polygroup ball so when i use q mesh if i just use extrude it would push the geometry back q mesh will go through and actually bridge the geometry back um i might have to do this one at a time because the geometry is getting weird so if i q mesh this back ugh, ugh. Yeah, this bent geometry is not doing me any favors, huh? Um, well, we can just do this. We can isolate. Q mesh on this flat one will work just fine because it pushes straight. Oops. Um, let's alt, alt drag over those so we can. Rah, alt drag. That pulls through just fine. On these bent ones, because it kind of goes at a weird angle as it goes through to the other side, it's not going to be able to pull through very nicely. Um, what you can do, though, is you can. Again, I'm just kind of fumbling my polygroups here. You can go through Control Shift Tap, or you can say, hey, delete poly. You can say bridge two holes, U to U, and then get rid of that middle one here. Insert single edge loop. Yep. Insert sing yep. insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, get rid of it. Um, and then you can put holes through here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick, again, group by normals. Uh, you're going to see the group by normals value. Let's go ahead and go down here to polygroup so you see where it is. Under polygroups here, we have group by normals and max angle of 45. Crank that up a little bit so that it allows you to get some of these more extreme angles in there. Um, and so now I need to again go through here and this one's going to be a little tougher, but all I need to do, it made a polygroup on the end. I can hold down alt and drag and then tap shift if I want to inherit that polygroup. Um, on both of these here, we can say Alt and Shift. And then all I need to do is say, okay, grab the light blue, grab the green, hit Control W to make this all in poly group. And now I can say, yes. And now I can say crease PG, hit D for dynamic. And now I have a belt with holes in it. This geometry is not great to sculpt on. Obviously you could have subdivided this and then had, you know, just pulled through a, a, a poly, et cetera, et cetera. So here, I'll tell you what I like to do more than allowing, I'm gonna let zebra, zebra mesh do the heavy lifting for me. So remember when I went over here and I said crease level of three, smooth level of four. Um, oh, sorry. It's got coffee. Okay, so uh, if I change my, so by default, the crease level is gonna be up to 15 and that's gonna keep your edges super crispy. I'm, I want that in this case, because what I'm gonna be doing is punching holes through this and then uh, booleaning things out. So I'm gonna go in here to my menu that I, or my brush that I brought in earlier. We'll just grab a cylinder here. I'm going to pull out a cylinder and then before I let go, I'm gonna pull back in to kind of thin it out and make it longer. And then I'm gonna say split mass points. I'm gonna say uh, crease with a crease tolerance of 30 just to crease my edges there. And I'm gonna push that through all the way through my object. And then I'm gonna size. I'm gonna size it. Uh, if you want to size just down one axis, you can or two axes. You can hold down Alt and just scale along that axis there, so it'll keep. You know, if you this is a uniform scale. Um, this is a scale along two axes there. Uh, so now I can hold down Control and drag out a copy, and then Control and drag out a copy, and you can rotate as we go to kind of match the curvature of the mesh here. So now I'm going to, like I said, I have. I'm gonna hold down Shift, turn off this eyeball. And then I'm going to turn this back on. So just these two. Whoops. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do an auto groups here. And then I can hit W and control tap this. So I don't know. Do a better job than me putting in your holes where they need to go. You could also string these along an IMM curve if you really want to get fun. But this is fine. So 
we have our object here, it's punching all the way through our object. I'm gonna set this to subtractive. I'm gonna move it down below because it's the order of operations here. So I want this geometry to stay. I want this geometry to be cut out. I'm gonna go over here to uh, live Boolean. Just turn that on, turn off polyframe. And now you can see these, we have holes cut in, it's live. So I can move these around or and or I can move my belt around and the Booleans work just fine. But it's not real yet. As soon as I turn that off, we got geometry here. So I wanna make this real. Because we have dynamic for both of these, well, for one of these, if I hit Shift D, you're gonna see we get this really low risk geometry. I don't want that on my Boolean. I want a nice smooth version. So I'm gonna go up here to Subtool, and we're gonna say Boolean what I see here with dynamic subdivision on, make Boolean mesh. That's gonna put out a union mesh, U mesh over here. So if I turn on polyframe, you're gonna see we have polygroups for all the inner rings. We have polygroups for the outer ring here. We have a polygroup for the front and the back. So now when I go into zero mesher, um, half is fine. Adaptive side, nice even quads, I guess if you want. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero because these groups are already smooth. The group's border is already sliced. It's very, very smooth. We don't need an extra smooth on top of that. So zero mesh here, and that'll go through and rebuild my belt so that I have a belt with holes in it. There we go, and we just keep hitting zero mesh or half. Um, in fact, so one thing you're gonna notice is uh, number one, you're gonna get low enough to where all of a sudden it starts to break down a little bit. So I usually just go one too far. Uh, another thing too is if I wanted to go through here and say, hey, I wanna punch this in. So I'm gonna go through here and hold down Alt and paint these and I wanna say punch right through here and I'm gonna say Q mesh, pull your ball and I try to punch this through. You're gonna see, oh, it didn't work. That's because Excuse me, that's because I have um, different, so when I zero meshed, it zero meshed this and it zero meshed this, it kept my borders just fine, but the geometry is slightly different on both sides. Well, I can hold down Control Shift, isolate just the red, geometry modified polygon delete hidden, go back in here, extrude polygroup wall, pull that thickness back, display properties flip, now the geometry is the same on both sides. Now I can go through here and say, you punch through with Q mesh. Bing! D for dynamic. Crease PG, crease level of, now in this case, I might do a crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two. Because remember, when I had very simple geometry, I was like way up here, like crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. But now that I have more geometry packed in, it's holding, it's maintaining those edges a lot better. So I can go down to crease level of one to get a decent fall off, and then smooth subdiv of two or three. And then again, crease PG to crease all my border edges. So that's how you can kind of do belt type things. And then past this point, if you're like, well, this is all great, but like if I do Shift D, um, there's not a ton of resolution here. This is where I would probably go in and be like, okay, fine, geometry, dynamic, apply. Now you have real subdivision history. So now you can go here like subdivision level three and put in your little storytelling of what this material is made of and how it interacts with each other, blah, blah, blah. Knots are a different thing. Um, <laughs> let me open up an example here. Let's see, delete all. That would be streaming turtle power. Michelangelo. Maybe. Let's see what this file is. Oh, it's a big one. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, T pose, Michelangelo. So now you're going to see I have wraps on here and I have kind of knots on here, right? However, when I go into solo mode, you're going to see, uh, cheater, cheater, you didn't actually wrap anything. You didn't actually knot anything. That is by design because knots are a pain. So let's go in here to the comma key tool. Just grab a humanoid, delete other. You may not have this exact Z tool, but um, dynamic off layers. Sorry, got a bunch of stuff open now. This is why I have my custom menu. I just have everything I need right in here, generally speaking. Display properties off. Uh, layers, big all. So we have an object here. We have a male here. And, oh yeah, knots. So if I want to make a knot, probably how I'm going to do it is I'm gonna do a quick save because I'm gonna hop out of this and go in and start doing IMM stuff, which again, can sometimes get a little bit crashy. So we're gonna go in here to mm, Plane 3D, 
F the frame. Uh, make poly mesh 3D. So well, make poly mesh 3D. Uh, and we'll switch over here so we can see better. How would I make a knot? So uh, the the brush that I sent out earlier has a little noodle on it, so I can drag out a noodle. I'm going to say split mass points, and then I'm going to say control drag out a copy of this, rotate it this way, maybe put it down underneath, and then maybe rotate another one and stick it here. And then I'm going to say inflate here, and then from the top here I'm going to say B, create insert mesh new, and now I can go through here and just put knots into something and then call it a day. I'll say split mass points, hit D for dynamic, and something like this would be the knot that I would use. Now is this a great knot? Not at all. But you can make knots if you want to, if you're really into it. Um, one way to do that would be if you have a very specific type of knot. Uh, you can also download knots. You can you get download knot brush packs and there's people who have already done this for you. But if you insist on doing it yourself. I'm going to go in here with a Z sphere, hit Q, hold down shift. Now, as far as like, so blah, 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 Z spheres. Z spheres, move, scale, and rotate, W, E, R. We don't need light boolean on anymore. So you can move, scale, and rotate up here just with your hotkeys. And then if I want to draw, I can hit Q, and then that's when you can draw a new Z sphere. If you want your Z sphere to be the same size as the original, hold down um, shift as you're dragging out, tap shift, and it'll inherit the size of the original. I can hit move to draw to move and then Q to go in here and make new ones and then move these ones around. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. You can use this to go through and not something. So it's just, it just a way to create geom a very very specific uh, controllable geometry um, but also allow you the ability to kind of go through and move things in a not geometric way using Z-spheres and then convert this to geometry basically. So, um, yeah, Q. Now, if you ever do like, oh, I forgot to hold down shift, now I have slightly different sizes, no problem. Go in here to, where is it, stroke, curves helper, say, uh, set Z spheres to draw size, and then whatever your draw size is, it will change your scale. So you're fine. So just go through here and make whatever knot that you want. And uh, if you want to make it a little nicer, again, you just hit Q and go through here and just, it's kind of a game of whatever. It's a game of whatever. <laughs> you can tell when my words start not being great. My words aren't being great, everybody. So move through here and we're making knots. So here's my knot. Great, so now I need geometry. If I hit A in my keyboard, that's adapt to skin. However, not it's by default it wants to dynamesh things. So if I go down here to adapt to skin, I'm gonna turn dynamesh resolution down to zero and then turn off preview and turn it back on. Again, that's just A on my keyboard. Uh, now we got better geometry. In fact, if you wanna see just the lowest res geometry it has, you can hit um, density of one and then now you can hit um, A on your keyboard. So here we have this. We can go through here and say, okay, great. Now you may be thinking, oh, great. Now I'm going to go through here and hit Control-D to subdivide and then start sculpting and moving and blah, blah, blah. And it will allow you to finish your creation in this mode. However, you may be thinking, great, and you renamed it. So you're like, you have no idea this is a Z-sphere anymore until you hit A on your keyboard. And then you lose all that stuff you're working on because this is just an adaptive skin preview. It's not real geometry. It'll let you treat it like real geometry for sure. It's just a preview. So if you really want this, say make adaptive skin, that's going to throw the skin Z sphere out here. And then we can append this back into our subtool stack. The Z sphere, if you need it, it's still there. You can use it again. You can do whatever you want to with it or you can delete it. So now this is real geometry. You're going to see how polygroups, you can use those to your advantage if you want to do some sci fi stuff. You can also hold down control shift. I like to go through here and pop these caps, end caps off. We're not popping caps, we're just popping end caps off. We're gonna say geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And now, if you recall, if I hit control W, all one poly group, Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over an edge, space bar, poly group, poly loop, tap, tap. Now I have a frame that I can use. If I wanna smooth these out, we've already talked about this, polished by feature open circle, tap, tap, tap. And then go in here to stroke frame my polygroup Brent mesh. Go in here to brush curve two, oop, brush curve, oop, brush curve two, uh, or whatever else you wanted to use. Brush 
FBI brush insert what we're using earlier. Like a bike chain. Yeah. And again, that depth, you maybe you want it down the middle. That's when you go into your brush depth and embed that, uh, which we already did earlier, so it maintained those. Um, but yeah, let's go back to brush curve. I like that. Boop. Um, and then, yeah, we want to go to stroke and delete and split mass points and we don't need our path anymore and now we've got a knot uh, now you can go through and finagle this knot if you need to um, again we have brush move auto masking we have topological turned on so you can go through here and just kind of nudge these things into place and then deformation inflate and now you can use this as a knot imm brush or whatevs um Seems like there was other ways to make knots, but I think that's good enough. Um, okay, uh, there's a ton of questions here. We got about 45 minutes left, so um, sorry, my long-winded explanations, things start to stack up. So if I miss one of your questions, I apologize. I'm just going in order as best I can. Um, I uh, miss being able to use a second monitor to replace my tools there. Will that happen one day? Maybe. I don't know. ZBrush, those ZBrush folk are always up to updating ZBrush, so maybe. Um, hard, okay. I mean, I'm trying to get back to the original comment here. Um, yes, yes. Slime bridge. Uh, trip knots. Okay. Uh, hard surface. I've chosen to concept art and replicate the girl has robot legs. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, so here... Let me just do this. Is it, is, that's a too broad of a topic for me to answer in one fell swoop. However, I've got a doc for you. If you scroll down, here's a bunch of people way better than me at hard surface doing hard surface stuff. I have it broken up into artist examples. So here's brute force, just kind of going through and making hard surface stuff in in these ways or id software is kind of a mix. Uh, and then brute force and rebuild like Ben Ert, Mike Nash kind of style of making stuff in ZBrush and then rebuilding it to sub D's and then kind of mixed solutions, Chi Vang and Nelson Tai and Alex. So, I mean, these are just a few examples. There's uh, hundreds of examples of people doing awesome work using ZBrush for hard surface stuff. So there's a, there's all sorts of cool stuff in here, I suppose. But anyway, for what it's worth, here's a document on hard surface, share, copy link. There you go. Now it's going to lose my place. Um, let's see. Yeah, have you been working with redshift materials yet? Um, not that much, but if you want to, let's talk about that. Let's say append. You know what? We don't even need to append. We'll say W, control drag out a copy of this. We can say split mass points. I'm going to rotate this around. So if you want to render in Redshift in ZBrush natively, go in here to, you see, we talked about earlier, matte caps and standard. Now we have Redshift uh, poly paint and Redshift color materials. So if I want this one to be aluminum, yes, I'm going to say uh, this one's selected. Control, let's say D for dynamic. And then underneath geometry, dynamic, smooth of of three. Really? Oh, there we go. Okay, so this one back here is selected. I'm gonna say uh, MRGB color fill objects. So we have the vertex color and material. And then I'm gonna go in here to say glass, redshift glass, and we're going to select this other one. We'll say color fill object. And on this one too, we'll go down here to dynamic. And again, I don't do a ton of redshift rendering in, in ZBrush natively, but uh, you can use Redshift Materials, and then all you got to do is go in here to Render here, and Render, Redshift Render, <laughs> turn on Redshift, there we go, hit BPR for Best Preview Render. The first time you do a Redshift Render, it's going to take a while to set up and then send your stuff over and then do, it's basically a bunch of setup, and then after it does its initial setup, then it'll render um, faster. There we go. So now we've got our glass material here and our aluminum material behind. Ta-da! And now we're rendering in Redshift. Um, there we go. Cool, cool. 
can explain how you retopologize tiny details of cloth. The threads of cloth and damage is a fiber mesh or puzzle to make with a transparent bag. This is a little more production-y. Um, generally speaking, it, it kind of depends on what your final result is. If your final result is for a 3D print, that has to be physical geometry. So in your case, you may... I wouldn't necessarily say I'd have to, like, for threads and cloth damage, I wouldn't go in and do, like, hey, um, I have pants, and then I'm going to go through and retopologize my jeans into the interior um, thread makeup of my jeans and then and, and continue that topology down to a single thread that goes across. What I'd probably do is say, hey, here's my jeans. Here's my hole in my jeans. That's it. Next subtool, thread, thread. Eh, I guess we can... Why am I gesturing at the camera when I can just do it? Uh, let's see. Let's turn off Redshift just in case I accidentally hit VPR. We'll say delete all, and we'll go back to the startup material. Um, all right. So I was doing something called pant damage. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is like, Wah. okay, Control D, um, Control Tap here. Mask lasso, we're going to give this guy a little pair of pants here. Um, in fact, we can maybe even hop into Marvelous if y'all want. Uh, okay, so I accidentally... It's fine. Uh, also, I like to duplicate things off. You... I like to duplicate things off. This might be just me, a GSB and me thing. Hit Control W, isolate this... Yeah, going to solo mode here. Uh, okay. Did it really not? Yeah, so Control Shift Tap. Oh, my poly group here, uh, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Here, delete lower, delete hidden, control shift drag, control shift A, delete hidden. So now I've got my pants shape. You don't have to do all that. I just tend to for some reason. You can also go through here and just say mask and extract. Hit extract, that's a preview if you don't want it that thick. This is very touchy, so I'm just going to manually type in 0 0.01. Yay, I've got extracted pants. I'm going to say accept. Now it's real geometry, and now I can just grab this. You know, I got these actual little stragglers. Just grab this, Control shift a delete hidden. I don't need thickness to this. I'm just going to Control shift tap the outside, delete hidden, make a pair of pants, zero mesh half, tap size down to zero, and now we've got pants. Um, also, you can give thickness to this or pull in these edges if you want to extrude, you know, edge loops in if you want to, and just tap Alt. Uh, to toggle between the entire edge loop or whatever. Uh, or I like to just go in here and say close convex hole and just boop, 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 and then boop, oops, boop, control shift tap. There you go. Just to cap it. So that way I don't have thin meshes I have to deal with. So we have jeans here. Uh, again, crease PG, control D a couple times. And now we're going through here and we're, you know, sculpting our compression wrinkles or whatever is going to make us cool jeans people. Now, one thing you can do with these compression wrinkles is go through here, invert that, and then BTC, brush transpose cloth, and then you can use cloth, um, dynamic cloth settings to go through here and just create, you know, compression wrinkles and stuff like that too. Uh, alternatively, or in conjunction with that, you can also go through here and you can start sculpting where you want your wrinkles to go. And then at any point, you can go through here and say, you know, I want to use my pinch brush. And on that pinch brush, I want to go in here to elasticity. Turn up my simulation iterations. Now my pinch brush has built-in cloth simulation. Now, we did mess up, like, our firmness is set to 4. So set that firmness down to 2. Uh, and now we're getting uh, a little bit more wrinkly stuff. And I can even use my subdivision history to get larger or smaller wrinkles. So if we go into solo mode here. You know, subdivision so level three will be more geometry, more wrinkles, or you can again use your uh, dynamics, dynamic settings to do whatever you need to do. Anyway, ZBrush 2021, what's new series? If you're new to just showing up here, um, playlists here, ZBrush 2023, what's new? ZBrush 2022, 2021. Here is the 2021 playlist. So much stuff on cloth and micro poly. 2021 was a huge release. So if you want to see more of that stuff, you can check it out here. Also, if we go to my ArtStation page here, I have it organized in this way. You can see the little folded down edges. So you can start ZBrush 4R8, what's new? And then, so intro to ZBrush, start here, intro to ZBrush. And then you can go all the way back to 4R8 and look at all the what's new stuff, if that is of interest to you. 
um, pants. So I want to go through here and I want to do damaged pants. So I'm going to have to do say X symmetry off because damage rarely happens symmetrically, right? And then we're going to put a little hole in the knee. Storytelling. Where would holes show up on a zombie? Well, they're probably going to have torn down here at the bottom where they're scraping on the ground and then on their knees when they're stumbling around on the ground and then if they're doing, you know, scraping their butt, let's say. So control alt tap We have masks in here. We can hit control w to make them all one poly group and then just say delete them out of here first. We're going to say delete lower then geometry modified poly to delete hidden. Um, I'll also do this really quickly a masking mask open border control tap to invert that polish by feature deformation and it's going to smooth those out now uh, I'm just going to control shift tap the pants part get rid of my caps delete hidden and then again I want to zero mesh around this geometry if that's not really what you're looking for I'm going to control tap these points in history to save my details uh, zero mesh half I guess or whatever it's not symmetrical so make sure X symmetry is turned off and then you can keep zero meshing half down if you want to. But then if you want to get your details back, project history and then control D and then project history and then control D and then project history. That is under, you can use history recall, so many cool things you can do, but that's under subtool project. You can project to other subtools, which is project all, visible subtools, or you can use project history, which is holding down control and tapping to get that. So. We have uh, this here. However, I don't have thickness, right? I subdivided, but I don't have thickness. Well, we can say delete lower. Here's a trick. Go in here and say uh, don't use Q mesh because that's going to stick polygons together, but extrude polygon roll. We'll go through here and extrude. And then we'll say display properties flip, which we already talked about. And now if I want to go through here and say geometry reconstruct, I can't. However, if I go through here and say insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroup, I can put an edge ring right down the middle, and unfortunately I'm going to have to do it on all of these open holes because that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. So I'm going to go through here, and now I've got, I basically put in my own subdivision. So if I go in here and say reconstruct, boom, we just reconstructed back. And if you need to do it again, like, oh, I had, I had three subdivisions, just go on either a delete lower and then go on either side and put in another edge ring and then hit reconstruct twice and then you'll be back where you started. So now we have holes in our pants and now we want to do threads. I would probably be more inclined to say BC brush curve tube. Go in here to stroke. A million ways you could do this, but go in here to stroke. It's as if I'm 3D printing something, not doing it in the texture. Go in here to stroke. Um, we'll just do as line here. So now I can just tap on one side and then tap on the other. Oops. Um, again, this is where that null node comes into play. Just append a polymesh 3D here. Scale it. Oh, oh, BTR to go back to regular transpose because we don't want cloth transpose all the time. So with that selected and then my pants showing BT, wait, not transpose, BTR, transpose regular. Excuse me, and then BC brush curve tube or whatever you want to use. Change it to as line, and now you can go through here and you can do your threads. Make that smaller. Um, not that you would want to do this, but you can turn on size. This is if you want to do like tentacles or something. You can go high, like big to small, and then when you tap to update, it'll actually taper. I don't know if that's useful to you, but we'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, so threads. So I actually, I'll, if you, want, <laughs> this goes back to the organic goop that we were doing earlier. Um, you can do as line here, and then this will be your, oops, this will, oh, it's not snapping. Um, snap turned on. Let's see if that works. You can also bridge between two polys. Ah, oh, brush curve is just not, not doing it today, huh? Well, luckily, I have a very simple tube that works like gangbusters. Military, I'll send this to y'all. Simple tube. As line. U to U. Simpler geometry, and it actually snaps. So let me go ahead and save this to y'all. Uh, brush, save as, throw this on my desktop. Simple tube. I'm going to put this on my drive here. Sorry, give me a sec. I can show you how to make it real quick, too. Um, but for the lazy among you, much like myself, my drive. Transfer. 
you into here. Share. Copy link. There you go. You can have simple tube. If you want to make your own simple tube, go out of edit mode. Control N to clear your canvas. Go in here to cylinder 3D. Drag it on your canvas. Edit mode. Make poly mesh 3D. No, wait. Don't do that yet. Cylinder. Don't make poly mesh 3D because I want to go through here and determine the number of spans I want. Now, I will say, having said that, to go down to here to initialize, and I say H divides of like 8, uh, and then V divides of like, say, 4, and then say make poly mesh 3D. I can go through here and say, okay, insert multiple edge loops here. So now I have a top poly group and a bottom poly group. I can even even these this geometry out here. I've got three poly groups here. B, uh, quick save. Not that we need to save anything because we're not working on anything important, but whenever I do this, I always want to do a quick save. Uh, B, create insert mesh new. Okay, good. So now we have an insert mesh brush of this, but I want it to be a curve brush. So stroke Curve mode, curve, curve mode on. Now we have a brush that will go along a curve, but they're not welded yet. So underneath brush, we want to make sure we go into uh, modifiers. And I'm going to say, hey, I want triparts brush. Yes, we have a beginning and an end poly group and a repeating middle poly group. Uh, I'm going to say weld points. Boop. Now it's welded. Uh, maybe turn on a little bit of stretch. And now go through here. I also, for this brush, I like to have bend start and bend end turned on. Um, if you're gonna use it for tentacles, like I said, you could turn, turn size on, go thick to thin if you wanted to, and now you've got a tentacle brush. But you see tentacles, if you did this to an octopus, you'd probably kill it. So you wanna go through here and say, um, would that be under brush? Yes, it would be brush. Modifiers the max bend angle. If you crank it up, um, it allows you to really bend things together. If you pull it down to zero, that'll allow it won't. It'll kind of push away. So then you can get kind of a wiggly little squiggly brush here. Um, if you love this functionality, you can save this brush, save as. Uh, you can even select icon. It'll select whatever's on your document here, um, and then save it. Go way back to the beginning of this video, and you can see where to save your brushes. Uh, or in this instance, uh, I just want a simple tube brush. So instead of this, I'm going to turn size off and then set the max bend angle back to, I don't know, 45 seems fine to me. There we go. Okay, so now we just have a simple tube brush that behaves a little nut better. Now, having said that, there is some cool stuff you can do with the brush curve brush, curve tube. So if I drag this, oh, we have still have as line turned on. Um, Stroke, curve mode, as line off. So here's our curve tube brush. You can change your Z intensity and that'll thin it out. You can go into brush, if I remember correctly, brush modifiers. Modifier set to 20. If I set this down to like six, you're gonna see, oh, oops, and Z intensity up to 100. You can see it'll change on the fly how many bands, how many, edges make up the profile of this curve. Also, speaking of profiles, B, E, extrude profile. Instead of having just a tube, you can go through here and choose any geometry and tap to update. And this one does have, um, we just talked about it, does have size turned on. If you don't want size turned on, now you've got, <clears throat> you can just swap out these different profiles or you can use alphas. I prefer brush the extrude profile because I can really dictate um, what the geometry is going to be, but if you're not into that, you can do, I forget what it's even called. It's not extrude profile, it is called something, uh, how does this thing work? Can I swap the alpha out? <laughs> what am I missing here? You should be able to swap the alpha out. I wonder why it's not letting me. Huh. I don't know. Anyway, um, what was the question? Tubes. Let me go back. Um, um, Oh yeah, threads and cloth. Uh, so anyway, that's how I would do threads and cloth and holes if I was doing um, 
things for like a 3D print. But generally speaking, you're exactly right, where it's like, hey, here's my jeans. And then for the wear and tear, you can go into Substance Painter. They even have like substance substances and decals where you can go through and like have transparency and then you know you can just kind of scrape cloth away and it'll leave leave threads like this and you can keep scraping away it'll start introducing opacity holes in your mesh um that's if i was just doing it for like a game engine for render real-time rendering definitely i would go into the i wouldn't i don't think i would bother modeling the stuff it would just be decals or transparency on your object. Now you gotta be a little bit careful with transparency and objects depending on the engine and the game. But yeah, anyway, long story short, yeah, I wouldn't use ZBrush for damage necessarily. Um, uh, still pretty new to so a lot of the stuff you're doing is really new. So yeah, to that point, cause I do go fast just because I get bored. Like, you know, even even in just the two hours we've been together, I've, I've talked about the same functionality like 15 times. So like by the 14th and a half time, I'm kind of like, okay, geometry modified topology to hidden. You know where it is? I don't gotta talk about it anymore, but I will say it. So that at least you know when I say, hey, geometry. So that would be under your geometry submenu, modify topology, delete hidden or I can go in here. Um, now, to everybody else who's just joining us, uh, if we go in here to playlists, definitely check out Intro to ZBrush New and Updated. That's basic ZBrush functionality, and then all in here is like what's new stuff. Same thing on my art station. Uh, intro to ZBrush, and then all the what's new, or you can go to my YouTube channel, go in here and search for like, how do I do hair, or whatever, and then there's there'll be stuff on hair in here you can just kind of peruse. And also, this is the live stream, so underneath my playlist here, look for the big blue genie. And then here's all my previous live streams. So if you want to see more project oriented stuff like making a, a Garbage Pail Kids waffle or a Mario or a Ninja Turtle or a shoes, <laughs> you can go in there and, I don't know, listen to my vocal fry. Um, let me see here. Uh... Oh yeah, you can also use fire mesh, just like you said. So yeah, you got it. Yeah, like got it. everything you've said is exactly right. You're on the right track. <laughs> uh, it doesn't happen when you add thickness to a triangular shape with dynamic on and with zero sub to this level. Sometimes it gets deformed with Q mesh adding thickness. It works perfect. The, so dynamic thickness is interesting. So for example, I'm gonna say Control Shift Tab, Control Shift A, Delete Hidden. Go in here. Let's get rid of these caps here. And delete Hidden again. So we want to add thickness to this object. We already know we can extrude here or we can Q mesh thickness here and the cool thing about Q mesh we already know we can alt drag on here and just pull through and it'll all go ahead and sew those up for me so if I hit D for dynamic increase PG we have uh, increase level of two smooth so this is the boring stuff where I'm like I don't want to explain this all the time but essentially this is just kind of really quick box modeling technique stuff however um, let's say we want to add thickness to something Oh, that was another cloth thing. Sorry, I'm kind of scattered. Um, you can go in here, for example, like BCK to cloth hook and go through here and like pull your cloth around, but you can also limit how much of this has an effect on your geometry. So if you go down here to thick skin, you can turn that on and then crank up your thickness, which is essentially just saying, hey, let me use cloth hook, but only allow me to go out 13 units uh, before it stops having an effect. Because if I turn thick skin off, it's just, it allows me to do anything, right? If I turn thick skin on with a very low value, now it's like I'm pushing cloth over an underlying surface. So now you can use that to your advantage to make creature skin wrinkles or cloth wrinkles. You can control as it kind of rubs up and down the surface because we have thick skin turned on. Wanted to mention that. Um, Seemed like I was, oh yeah, thick skin. Not thick skin, but dynamic thickness. So going down here, we can also, underneath geometry, we've already talked about dynamic subdivisions where we turn on dynamic gives us a preview of creasing and subdivisions in here. So subdivision level three, etc. Uh, if I do that down to zero and then change my thickness up, you're gonna see it's gonna give me fake thickness. This is actually awesome. If we go back here to our original thing we were playing with, I'm gonna go in here and say append a plane and with this plane we're gonna rotate rotate it around 
So now we have a plane I want to drape over these objects. We'll go ahead and turn our floor on by default because it's not going to make any sense to anybody. But quickly explaining this, draw with elevation set to 1 will set the floor to be at the lowest point of the lowest subtool in your scene. So when you BPR render, it'll cast a shadow appropriately on your floor plane. It's basically a shadow catcher. If you want to know where that plane is in real world space, change that elevation to 0 and it'll put the floor not snapped to the bottom part of your subtool. Anyway. This plane here, we've already talked about this. We can go in here to dynamics and we can say, hey, gravity on a little bit, floor collision on, firmness of two, run simulation, and that'll go through and ignore everything except for my floor because I say floor collision is turned on. If I want it to collide with these other objects, turn on collision volume. Now when I run the simulation, it'll go through and drape. The other thing too that's cool, you can go to BTC, which is your transpose cloth. And now when I move this down, I can use this, my transpose, to dictate gravity basically and just kind of pull things around or scrunch things in and wrap objects with this. Now, you're going to see it's kind of a low res result. If I want to preview what it would look like with dynamic on with a smooth subdiv of two, I can preview, hey, now it's a little smoother. So that would be what the cloth would look like if I subdivided it uh, twice. Let's also switch this out. Um, also thickness, you're gonna see when I go to the back here, I can turn on display properties double and I can see both sides, but I can also dial in. There's two really cool things you can do in here. Number one is micro poly. So at any point I can go through is I want a chain mail object and I wanna drape that chain mail object onto this object, no problemo. And essentially what I'm doing is this object right here is an instance. Uh, so if I turn dynamic off, you're gonna see, oh, it's replacing every single face on here with this object. I can go through here and do a hex plane. You know, I can go through here and do a weave. And some of these are have like thickness built in. You know, so this has an inside and an outside. If I do dynamic smooth div of one, it'll divide the geometry, which means it's going to give again every single face in that geometry is going to get swapped out with that. It's not real yet because it's just a preview. Dynamic is just a preview, but. Um, Again, we can just pull this back up and then just use um, run simulation or again use transpose cloth to do your thing. Let's go ahead and flatten that back out. Um, let's see, dynamic off on. And then, ooh, it kept it. That's, that's a bug. Uh, again, smooth subdiv of one, even higher resolution. And you can, only, you can crank your gravity up a little bit here. So when it runs the simulation, again, it's going to collide. It's going to give you that look, and it's all fake. If you want it to be real geometry, go in here to dynamic, apply. Now it'll be real geometry, and then you can go through here, and you can, like, deformation, inflate, or whatever. And then you can just inflate this geometry up. And now if I hit dynamic, every single face is going to, and it runs out of memory, because every single face is now being replaced by this. I don't want that, so I'm going to turn micro poly off. There we go. And now I can use just smooth subdiv to go through here and just give me a smooth subdiv preview of what this would look like subdivided. So we can subdivide it, fake, subdivide once, and then go in here and inflate and do whatever you want. So that's micro poly. Having said all that, that's not what I wanted to talk about. We were talking about thickness. So dynamic here, micro poly off, thickness up, and this is going to give me a fake preview thickness and then I can go ahead and just say you know whatever run simulation so now I have thick cloth that is fake subdivided twice with fake thickness and there we go now the problem for the question was uh, we have dynamic turned on we have fake thickness uh, but if we have what was it it was a Adding thickness of triangular shape with dynamic on zero subdiv. Sometimes it gets deformed. Q-mesh adding thickness work perfect. Okay, so we have this object here. And I'm going to say control drag out a copy. And I'm going to say split mass points. And we're just going to say group by normals. I'm going to pop this off. We're going to say delete hidden. Um, so this, again, has thickness that's fake. And I'm going to make a triangle shape. Um, one way you can do that is we can say go through here. And we can say, oh, another thing too. When we add thickness you're going to see it kind of adds thickness. If I go to the top here, here's my real geometry right down the middle, and then it adds thickness on both sides. However, you can go in here with the offset, and you can say, hey, I want my real geometry to be 
the front and then my thickness only goes in or the opposite. I want my real geometry to be the back geometry and then my thickness goes out from there, up to you. Or you can split the difference, set that to zero. Um, now, if we want to make triangles, one way we can do that, we can say um, bridge two points, U to U, and then we can say Alt, uh, drag over this, and then say delete polygon. Uh, or you can just say grab this one here, and then invert it, delete hidden. So long story short, we have a triangle. Um, so now if I do dynamic thickness on here, it seems to work. So maybe if I triangulate, all the geometry. Um, I feel like I feel like there's a way to do that. Is it under modify geometry modify topology? There's something tickling the back of my brain about triangulating meshes automatically, um, or not? Uh, what would that be under? Anyway, you can go through here. You can, uh, you know, triangulate a mesh manual, I suppose. And another cool thing, and it's a pretty standard modeling feature, but one thing you can do is you can go through here and you can spin. So if, if any of these edges, you know, aren't the right direction, you can go through here and you can spin edges to get the result that you want. Um, okay, so let's see if this doesn't work. I'm just trying to get it to break so I can give you a possible solution. Or I might just go... Yeah, that sucks, man. Um, <laughs> sometimes that's the case. It seems to be working okay. One thing you can try is over here under smoothness, you can change your smoothness value if it's giving you like a weird deformed thing. Play with your smoothness and see if that helps. But um, I can't get it to break. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, we got still got time. Uh, how to set... Uh, selected points at the same height to make them flat. Yes, okay, so if we have a cylinder. Uh, brain, where are you at? There you go, um, make polyimage 3D. So one thing, if you just want, oh, if you, this also indicates that I have st stored points in history somewhere. If you wanna get rid of that, just control tap the latest point of whatever you're working on, control tap it again, I'll get rid of that. So to quickly move points into place across a straight line, I like to use clip, so control shift, go to the side, and I wanna move all these points. I saw B radius turned on, turn that off. Clip this back, and that'll just push all of those points back to a flat plane. So I know this isn't really answering your question, I just wanna shout that out as, an, uh, as a possibility for anybody who might be watching. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these caps here, so we're just dealing with, oh, that's another thing too. So see how I have clip, and I'm going through here and I'm clipping. Um, you can use knife if you want to slice through and, you know, have a new polygroup and good geometry. That's one way to do that. Um, and if you look up knife curve, I got a ton of videos on that that has some really cool functionality. But it say I have knife curve and I'm like, okay, I want to use selection. Oh, dang it, I have knife. Just tap control. That'll swip, swap you temporarily over to visibility. Hold down alt. And then now you can say delete hidden. And then you can go back to slice or knife or whatever you were using. Now, flattening. Um, one thing you can do, so you can go through here and we, let's say we've just got a bunch of noisy stuff, right? Uh, we can go through here and we can say align edge strip. So if I click here and then click here, that, oh, come on, come on. It has built in stuff that I don't necessarily like. Let me see if I can do this. Align edge strip with my mouse. Align edge strip. You can align edge strips, but then it wants to add something. Um, so basically this this is fine, and then this one is fine. There we go. This isn't a line, just tap. Tap, 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 tapa, tapa, tapa. That's the name of our show. So you can go through here and you can just align these edges like so. Um, you can also do the old school way, if you just have like, you know, geometry doing something, and you're like, hey, I want to uh, align this edge strip. We can go through here, we can say transpose edge loop complete and that'll just make it so that the transpose line is already available to you really quickly uh, with whatever masking selection you want or you can just manually go through here and say well not manually but uh, mask edge loop complete. You can just mask this control tap to invert it. Um, w, I'm going to say hold down, sh um, if you hold the if, gizmo, alt, drag it'll snap between these two points you can set your alignment this way and then you can just Z scale back 
so that everything is uh, aligned that direction and then Z scale this way. Uh, is it doing it? What's going on here? Z scale. Oh, ugh. B T R. I always have transpose cloth on because I'm always demonstrating it. There we go. Transpose regular. You can do the old school method of just Z scaling back to align edges. You know, so now you just basically unmask what you want to move, which is the same thing as just a vertex selection in any other program. And then you're just using masking and then just using Z scaling to go through and do that. Um, you can also use clipping on interior edges too. So like here, unmask this, go back to uh, clip. Uh, clip, 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 clip. And then you can just say, just move all these points so they snap to that. Um, there's other stuff you can do too. What is it? Um, aligning points. It was, again, there's, I want to say, you know what? I think align, if I want to align between just like here and here, Hmm. I'm trying to remember, or if I want to snap two verts to the same point. I'll have to think on that one. I don't do that a lot, so I don't have a really elegant solution off the top of my head for... Ah, somebody smarter than me probably has that answer. Uh, selected points at the same height. Um, yeah, so we have like this point here and this point here, and I want them at the same height. So in this case, what I might do is say, you know what? Let me mask point U and U, control tap to invert that point, and then just say, hey, where do, what point do I want to scale them to? Here, and then just scale them. Z scale them over here, or have those two points and then clip them out, or snapping, snapping. There's something tickling the back of my brain, but it's just not coming through. Um, Skin, data, skin detailing for a character can be done directly in Painter instead of sculpting a ZBrush. What would be the benefit of doing that? Um, it's less destructive. I would say the same thing for uh, stitches. So you can do stitches uh, and, and also like fabric surface detail. So for instance, if I want uh, a weave on this, I can hit, you know, let's say D for dynamic, get a nice smooth result. I can go in here to surface noise and I can say, go in here to noise plug and I can say, give me a weave pattern, okay. And let's play with this weave pattern. Uh, basic noise, mix basic noise down to zero. We have our noise plugs, we're gonna say plug and scale up. We're gonna take our strength up here. Um, there it is, down, sorry. Uh, so now you're gonna see we have a weave pattern here. Let's do the strength so we can see a little bit better. Now, one of the things is this is a planar projection. So it looks great from this angle where we went into Noisemaker, but over here it's on the side, it's busted. So if you switch this over to UV, now it'll use the UVs of my object, and now we can change that plug-in scale. So, great, we have a weave pattern here. However, it's not real. It's just a displacement map based on noise driver. And you can also go through here and edit. You can bring in your own alpha for a weave pattern. Let me just go to my alphas real quick. Um, 2023. Alphas, cloth, tileable, something like this. So we can swap. So now I have in my own custom alpha in here. I can turn off noise plug, and then we can go oh, mix basic noise is down to zero. Now we're just using noise scale, our imported, imported, imported alpha, sorry, alpha scale. And then I'm going to switch the strength back this way so that it behaves like I would expect. And then again, we'll say alpha scale up a little bit, and we'll say okay. So here is my weave pattern. Um, but again, it's just surface noise. It's just displacement on this object. So if I wanted to bake this out, what I'd have to do is go in here. Number one, I'd have a geometry dynamic apply and now I'm at 7,000 polygons. We'll hit control D until I'm in like the millions. So then I can go through here and say either surface noise apply to mesh which will go ahead and transfer that surface detail to actual geometry detail. So now I can go through here and sculpt. But now I have geometry I can bake. Um, or what I prefer to do is do mask by noise and then go in here and, uh, you know, we could say store a morph target. We could go in here to layers. We can add a new layer. And then when I say go into my deformation inflate 
I can go through and like inflate or deflate to get the result I want, control drag to unmask, go out of recording mode. And now I have a little wiggle room. If I want to go through here and make an adjustment, I have it on a layer. Or if I want to pop it in the opposite direction, or if I want to over crank it, I have the ability to do that in my layer. As well as if I say, okay, bake all. I can also go, I have a morph target stored. So BMG is my morph brush. And then I can go back in here and morph this back to the original state. Now, having said that, okay, great. Now I've got tiling surface noise and I want to, or in the, in the case of skin, I got a bunch of skin detail that I can bake off. If the art director comes by and goes, oh, you know what? This is perfect. I just really wish that like it was tiled a little bit more. <sighs> okay, so I hope I saved the layer. I hope I remembered what alpha I was using. I hope I remember all the things I need to do to go back and recreate this at a slightly smaller tiling alpha. Or I can go into Substance Painter, go into the material that's applied with the fabric detail and go scale more, scale less. Or, even better, let's say you're working in Unreal Engine, or any game engine, and you just have material IDs, and, and, and you have a cloth material in Unreal, and that's going into a mask that is showing, hey, that is telling the engine, hey, where this mask is, go ahead and show this cloth. And then in Unreal Engine in real time, you can go into the material settings, and you can tile it more or less through that mask so that on your character that tiling material will update on the fly. So you can do that with skin detail, you can do that with tiling fabric, you can do that with stitches, all non-destructively on the fly, real time, as opposed to having to go back to source, which is your source high res, and make those changes. Now, having said all that, if you're like, oh, I'm doing all this stuff in Unreal and it's all amazing and there's all these material IDs and it's all performant and it's all awesome, great. Okay, can I have a 3D print of that? No because it's not real. It's all just a bunch of textures applied to geometry to make it look like it has this detail built in, but that geometry doesn't exist. So you can either come up with a real novel solution to bring that material in here, material properties in here as a displacement map, displace your geometry, and then apply the geometry, apply the displacement to your geometry so that you can 3D print it. You can do that. Um, it's just a little bit of extra work, but um, that's the downside of getting fancy with not putting stuff into the high-res geometry is for stuff like 3D printing. Um, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, BPR to Geo is uh, if you have... Well, yeah, if you're having um, array mesh or uh, micro poly, micro mesh, basically anything where it only shows up when you hit BPR render, there is a geometry convert BPR to Geo. It's in geometry. Yeah. So if you're having a problem with like array meshes or nano meshes not converting the geo, sometimes array meshes gives me a kind of a problem. Um, hit this convert BPR to geo. Anything that's visible in your BPR, you can convert to geometry. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Cool, no problem, John. You thanks for stopping by. Oh no. Testing, okay. Okay, I shouldn't be muted. I was, I was afraid that sometimes um, when I'm doing hotkeys, so when I'm in the Zoom meeting and I'm actually getting work done and then half listening to the meeting, uh, control alt and stuff, like hot ZBrush hotkeys, control shift will actually do like a Zoom hotkey that like mutes and unmutes my mic. So I do get nervous that I'm accidentally muting myself. Oh, wait, no, 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 video capture device. This one I want to mute. Oh no, I, I didn't I didn't see that down there. Hopefully you've been able to hear me on my road mic and not my video capture device mic. Sorry about that. Anybody from concept art, especially too, I want to know what the impact of AI is on the industry at a larger scale. Is it better for us to be specialists or is it better to branch out and take more general? Of course, we can survive the AI thing coming in years. The cool thing that got cool, interesting, terrifying thing about AI is Who's to say it's going to take years when we get into exponential growth and even the things where it's like, well, if, if you stop AI from scraping, eventually, and it could happen tomorrow, um, because when we talk about exponential growth, that's something like when like a, the number billion for a human brain is it's hard for our monkey reptile brains to comprehend numbers that large. Same thing as when we talk about exponential growth or exponential learning rates is 
it, for us as humans, it's like, well, if I want to learn something, it's going to take a while and it's going to be gradual and it's going to be, you know, something I can comprehend over time. When it comes to AI learning, very, very quickly, in the blink of an eye, it could go from, because you got to remember, AI right now is is the worst, the worst AI is going to be is right now. It's only going to get better, more performant. Uh, and even if you take away, well, you can't use any human. Here's the other thing, too. It makes me laugh about AI is they're like, AI, it just goes to our station and scrapes all this stuff. And then it just takes all that data and creates things from it. And I'm like, kind of like what I do. If I'm going to make a make something, I'm going to go to ArtStation. I'm going to look at like, ooh, I want to make an orc. Let's look at orcs that other people have done. Let's go and look at, uh, let me Google ref, what kind of orc? Well, it, what is, where does he live? How much money does he make? What biome does he live in? I want to look at Arctic orcs. And I'm going to look at Arctic clothing. And I'm going to look at orcs on ArtStation. And I'm going to take all of that data and I'm going to spread it out. And then I'm going to slowly and methodically use that reference to create something. So just like a very ineffective, slow reptile brain AI, I do the same thing. Uh, however, it's able to do it faster and better and easier than I can. Well, you say better, it's like, well, no, you will arrive at a better result. Maybe I will. Uh, that's not going to be a guarantee forever. Um, and you also got to remember where that bar is set. Because the, 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 when it comes to like dr uh, automated driving and anything with AI, it's like, well... AI is not perfect or AI is not creating any, it's not doing Mozart. So it's garbage. It's like, well, neither are we. I'm not doing the best stuff in the world. And honestly, if you look at what people watch, like, oh, AI movies or movie scripts, oh, they're not going to be that good. You need a, like, what movie script is that good? When's the last time you ever gone to the movies? Like, oh, Top Gun was so awesome. Was it awesome? Or was it like, was that script awesome? Did it need to be awesome? Were all the were every movie you've watched was it an awesome script or was it an effective script? And also think about what most people watch on TV. And it's not I'm not like bashing it or anything. I'm just saying, hey, given what's most popular, are those the best scripts in the world? Are those the most awesome things made by humans, or was it just reality TV schlock? And that's happens to be very popular, and the bar is kind of low. So yes, AI will be able to do things way better and way faster than humans can eventually. Um, but also, I don't think the bar's that high. Honestly, like that's the other scary thing too, is like, as soon as you can say, hey, make an orc, blue. Oh, you know what? I want an Arctic orc. Hey, you know what? I want an Arctic orc, you know? And then they'll have sliders that you can go through and just kind of pull and mush things around and add more eyeballs or more muscular arms. Or, you know, I, I want an orc that looks like Bill Murray. Okay, there's your Bill Murray orc dressed in Arctic gear. Um, in 60 seconds, and you're just pulling sliders around. Um, and that's what I want to have, and it's you're going to be able to do that. And uh, so, I, long story short, I don't have a good answer. It'll be interesting, scary. Um, and it's, it, this is I'm all only talking about artist implications here too, but like the implications when it comes to like you know driving or. Uh, manufacturing or disease or interstellar travel or mining uh, asteroids or whatever we problems we want to solve that exponential learning AI will figure things out before we would be able to exponentially faster and eventually or hell even right now it's going to be able to train itself and train other versions of itself and train better versions of itself and train faster versions of itself using stuff that we don't know what it is. It's going to talk, be able to talk in ways that we can't comprehend. There's, there's no way for us to look at here. Here's AI code. Well, it's going to use whatever makes sense to it to communicate more effectively and faster with other versions of itself that have nothing to do with humans or human brains or human comprehension. So, and then we can't control it. And then it's faster and smarter and better and we don't understand how it's doing, what it's doing, and how do you, what are you, are you going to control it? No, of course not. And it's going to be able to propagate itself and put itself anywhere and hide itself and we're not going to have a clue of what it's doing or how it's doing it. And then it's going to be Terminator. There's going to be Skynet. There's going to be Terminators. Uh, I'm going to go back in time with Kyle Reese. They're going to make a movie about it. And um, James Cameron will direct it. I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll be fun, right? <laughs> uh, pinch brush, peel to the... Uh, 
Pinch brush, different marks. No, they crease when they're making. I don't know if I follow that one. Mm. It's time for me to go, isn't it? Yeah, it's 805. Um, if there's any real easy questions, I'll finish them out right here. Build a new system for ZBrush. What component would you say is the most important when it comes to ZBrush? Uh, I, what I like about ZBrush is the ability to keep the artist working on artwork and just being creative and be kind of being one with what you're creating. Um, that's, that's my gold standard for like what a program should be. It should lower the barrier to entry so an artist can go in and just create without being loaded up with a ton of... It, 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 here's the thing. ZBrush does have a learning curve. Believe me, I've used a ton of programs. ZBrush does have a learning curve. However, if you get over that learning curve, you get into a cadence that's very quick and very creative and very kind of almost relaxing for me anyways. Whereas when I go into another program, and not, I'm not saying like new programs that I'm not used to. I'm like, I go back into Maya. I've been using that for longer than I've been using ZBrush. It's clunky. If it's not set up in a way that's like, oh, poly groups and deformers and dynamic and shift D and D and blah, 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 go through and just create, 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 create. I tend to be like, okay, edge, extrude, settings, menu, set. And, you know, it's very, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. You're, you're authoring content rather than creating content is the best I can example I can give you. So that's a non-answer for your question, but I can't give you any one thing that's like, oh, if you do a new system for ZBrush, Make sure you include this one really important mesh integrity fix mesh or this one single button. It's more about a feel in ZBrush for me. How do I ignore group in panel loop? Uh, I think maybe visibility. Sorry, I'm just going to be going fast through these. Uh, make poly mesh 3D. We're going to say group by normals. And then if I go down here, so this is, oh, you know, let's give you a better example. Sphere. Make poly mesh 3D. Control shift. Slice. Zero mesh half, depth size down to zero, keep groups. Let's polish by features. Zero mesh. Okay, so we've got different poly groups on here and we want to do like a sci-fi panel loop. So I can go down here to geometry, edge loop. Uh, so panel loops here, we can just pop these things off. There's even a Z plugin you can download from the Pixelogic website, which is called Panel loop presets. This is made by Chi Vang and Joseph Drust, I believe. Chi Vang and Joseph Drust. Got it. You can go through here and you can dial in presets. Uh, you should be able to. Um, unless. Oh no. Maybe I need to, maybe there's a new version I need to get. Anyway, you can use panel loop presets to kind of save your own presets or go through here and just make changes. So if you want to undo this, make your bevel uh, polish, maybe more thickness. So now you can go through here and start busting out your own panel loops. Now, if I'm in here and I'm like, okay, I want to ignore that one. Let's see if visibility even does it. Can I ignore? Okay. Yeah, it looks like mask or visibility. Now in this case, I'm going to turn polish down to zero so it doesn't separate these edges here. So if I isolate this with visibility and do panel loops, it'll leave it alone, it looks like. And or if I just hit W, control tap that poly group to mask it. Uh, Let's see if that works. Mm. Let me see. Mask. Invert. Masking doesn't seem to work that well because it has a fall off between those. So it looks like visibility is your best bet. Just use visibility to dictate that. Um, I can't pick the color I want when I use poly paint. That's a problem. So let's say uh, control F, RGB turned on. We have poly paint red, we have poly paint blue, uh, poly paint blue. Am I missing something? I don't have a texture loaded. Oh, gradient's turned on. Sorry, <laughs> I, didn't, I don't usually have that on. Red, green, 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 <laughs> green and blue. Okay, so you should be able to tap C on your keyboard and select your poly paint or drag off from here and select your poly paint. If you couldn't, I'm wondering why that would be. What it might, I'm not saying this is the case, but for instance, if we say um, white poly paint color and then fill, and if the expectation is, oh, I'm gonna drag off of here and select red. It's not really red, it's just this matte cap showing you red because the shader ball is 
giving you material properties that happen to be red. The polypaint itself is not red. It's just white polypaint. So when I go through here and try to pick or tap C on my keyboard, it's just going to select white. But um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, choose a color. Oh, from a different page or a screen. How can you select specific color from reference? Yeah, that's a tougher one. I wanted to say there was something in my brain that was like, hey, you can use, oops, you can use Z color to select. I just don't remember what it is. There's something in here. Oh, is that it? No. What is it selecting? <laughs> I'm not even. I, you know what? I should really read the documentation for these buttons. I don't know exactly what they do. I feel like there's something in here that allows you to select colors. Now, okay, if you if you do need to bring in reference, you can go in here to texture import and select a color from it. Let me go to my desktop here, see if I got something. Uh, uh, okay, I don't want to accidentally grab something, so I'm just gonna grab something from the internet. I'm like, okay, this is scary. Uh, save image as on my desktop as Genie. So if I want to sample from a texture, texture import, I'm gonna to go to my desktop here. I'm gonna bring in any texture that I want. So I've got it here, I'm gonna say select it, add it to my spotlight, and then I can, if I'm so inclined, I can go in here and I can say, okay, give me a, oops. I'll give you two different ways you can do this. Um, pick your poison. I'm going to choose a flat color material. I'm going to have this behind here. I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard. This is um, Spotlight. So just look that up if you want more Spotlight information. I have RGB 100% turned on. And then by default, your brush should have... Um, key, click and drag, and click again to set color. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, so a couple different ways you can do it. So uh, standard brush, RGB, or BPA is your paint brush. That's just standard brush with RGB turned on. Uh, and then underneath brush samples, you're going to have spotlight projection. So I can oop, make poly mesh 3D, subdivide this up. You can paint here, and then you can just sample from this. You can tap C and sample. In fact, if you just want this up on your screen somewhere, just do Shift S to store a snapshot, switch back over to whatever you're working on. And then now you can go through here and you can sample from this image. I'll give you a better way to do that. So we have a texture imported in here, right? And see how the aspect ratio is like 1920 by 1080. If I go in here to a plane and we say uh, make poly mesh 3D, white color, we can go down here to texture, or sorry, poly paint, and we can say uh, poly paint from texture. So I'm gonna, in my texture map here, I'm gonna grab my image and see how it's kind of squished. I'm gonna say shift poly paint from texture. That's gonna change my plane aspect ratio to match my image. And then I'm gonna say turn texture on. We'll set this to a flat color. So we're just getting the color information. That's not necessary. You can you can just have it, the, the texture, it'll sample from the texture. But now I can put this wherever I want, go out of edit mode to drop it to my canvas, go back in here to whatever I'm working on with whatever materials I'm working with. And then you can go through here and you can just tap C and then you know sample from whatever you want and fill. Um, uh, fast as much RAM as possible, solid CPU, 12, 16 core, new GPU, as good CPU. Yeah, RAM and CPU is important for ZBrush. Um, beep, boop, beep. Pinch brush, uh, first stage, stage two, first stage wrong. I'm not sure about the pinching and then this two stages. I can follow that one. Oh, okay, yeah, the thickness trying to add in the wrong offset. Yeah, maybe that was it. Thickness and then uh, offset, maybe. Yeah, oh, yeah, and hard drive speed, good call. Um,. Cool, cool, cool. Look, look, look through. I'm gonna get a chain or a wrap around a cylinder type. I have a snap straps. I have a six multiple 
loop of a single strap or chain. Uh, that's another thing we didn't really talk about. So if you go back through this video, we go through um, controlling curves and how to do that effectively. Uh, I didn't mention, however, if we go in here to B, we were talking about, you know, insert mesh brushes and curves and such. Going through here with like the hose, you can hold down, oh, make poly mesh 3D. You can go through here and you can hold down shift and that sometimes will snap around an object. Actually, there's an awesome use for this too. If I go in here, my brushes, uh, if you look up IMM repository tire brush, you can actually, oh, do I not have it? Damn. I was hoping, oh, yeah, I do. Uh, so somebody, I don't know who made this, but somebody made it really good. So here's the geometry, just a repeating uh, geo that I can hold down shift and snap around and you can make tires using IMM brushes. And again, if you want to make it bigger, just change your brush size. If you want to change it to a low profile tire, just change your Z intensity down and boom, you have a tire maker using IMM and snapping around a curve. Now, as far as like the ability to snap, make poly mesh 3D. You know, I want to do multiple. Let's go in here to slice curve. That's where you would go in here to stroke, like we were doing earlier in the video. Stroke, curve functions, frame our polygroup borders, uh, BI brush insert, or let's assume curve tubes here. And then you can just tap. And that'll go ahead and do all of these split mass points. Um. Probably the other thing you guys steal some other people's time when you learn it and you might not think it's good, but it's someone's property, someone's copyright. True, just like I do. You know, when I, I, I go on to ArtStation and I steal people's copyrighted material and then I make it into something else. Like just, you know, and then I also go on Google image search and I steal from other people's photographs to create something new. I'm a crappy AI, you know. Um, I don't, I don't just make things up my, out of my head or just with my own experiences. I take the experiences of others and movies of others and images of others and I use that because, I mean, we're all human too, right? So all of that experience I've built up has been built on copyrighted material, technically, and then that's what I create. So it just, again, it just does it way better and faster than we're able to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's definitely already... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 3D, I just do resin printing. Um, if you want to know more about 3D printing stuff that I've done in the past, uh, go in here and just do print. And then you can see, oh, it's a bunch of uh, lychee slicer stuff if you're into that program for setup. Uh, Elegoo Mars 3 Pro, Benny 5, Elegoo Mars 2. I've gone through and I've done videos on that type of 3D printing. Yeah, and that's the other thing too, Pro, is like expecting, I used to think, I, I'm a big Star Trek fan, so I'm like, oh my god, if we can get AI, we'll finally have that computer, you know, hey computer, do this, and take a, make a starship, and take that starship, and go travel the universe, and don't, like, people don't have to work at factories anymore, we can just have AI and robots do that, and then we are free, we are free to just explore the universe, or free to just do whatever really makes us you know, want to create and want to explore and want do, leaves us allowed allowed to do what we need to do as human beings, and also fix the environment and also make sure, like you're saying, that people are uh, treated uh, like human beings and is we can be in a post scarcity world. But then, the older I got, the more and the more I saw, the more I, and then you know, go through COVID and stuff. The more I'm like, no, I think. That we have the utopia future, but I think what's probably more realistic is what you're saying, which is there's just something about us that uh, we just can't have nice things. There's something about not not humanity as a whole, but just a, a, a small percentage of humanity that really just doesn't allow us to have and maintain nice things for everybody. There's just something in us, tribalism, I suppose, that I don't know. We just can't be nice to each other in a, in a way that I can't I can't be in a good spot while you're in a good spot. You have to be in a bad spot in order for me to be in a good spot. That mentality. Um, and even if there was a solution, automatically like 40 percent of the human population on Earth would be against it <laughs> for some reason. And not because they would really want to be against it, but because a very small percentage of human beings would want that 40 percent to be against it because that that benefits that very small percent of the population. 
and then here we are you know so i don't know maybe ai once it you know hits the singularity it will fix us because we uh we are fundamentally broken or at least enough of us are fundamentally broken that it causes severe really really bad issues <laughs> if that makes sense i used to be hopeful now i'm kind of like hey man i don't know if we can figure it out great i'm not gonna hold my breath um thickness of the panel loop oh yeah i gotta probably go yeah we're 20 minutes after anyway um multiple times using snap strap but it didn't work well yeah you would basically in, in, yeah so I'm, I'm doing this where it's like I'm not really wrapping if you did want to actually wrap something you might have to use Z spheres to wrap it around your surface or use like a helix primitive and go in here to initialize and then use this to kind of you know kind of form it to your surface or you can even go in here and make polymesh 3d hit w we did this earlier too use like a bend curve deformer with a little less resolution here like so you know you could use this to kind of give you a path to wrap and then if you want to go through here i'm just going to do a real quick uh, group by normals crank that max angle up a bit so we just get the pink parts delete hidden and then just like we did before poly group poly loop here and here oops there we go isolate delete hidden um frame B I will say this chain brush isn't a very good one so if you want to make we'll just do it real quick IMM curve hit M on your keyboard I wouldn't use this train chain uh, I'm going to go out of edit mode hit control N let's go in here to ring 3d edit uh, before I make poly mesh 3d I'm going to simplify this down a bit we'll do like a s divide of 12 and 12 and 24 or something like that maybe Make poly mesh 3D, hit W, go in here to extender, and just go, there we go. So now, well, that's a little bit much. Um, oh, we can just bring it back. So here's one chain. Maybe I'll want to go through here and inflate it a little bit. Deformation inflate, W, control drag out a copy, go through here, rotate it. And then, now if I was to take this into a brush, you're going to see underneath my brush settings, I have, by default, I have tri parts turned on. You either want to turn this off or and or hit control W on your keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and uncrease all. B, again, quick save just in case. B, create insert mesh, new. Now we have a chain insert mesh. Of course, we want that on a curve. So this will be a better brush. Curve, uh, um, not curve here, stroke, curve mode. So curve brush, curve mode. And now we have a chain brush and we're going to have to play with a few settings here. So here's our chain brush, see how they're not linked up. Go in here to curve steps, and we'll say maybe like 0.75. Bring those, uh, maybe 0.5. You know what, let's drag that curve out again. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't trust it. Let's say 0.75. There we go, 0.75. So then you can go ahead and save this chain brush as your chain brush, and then go back in here. And now we can wrap chains here. We can go back into our brush depth. And we can say drag this down and bet it a little bit more and then we could just say delete stroke delete go ahead and split mass points so that the chain is by itself and then we've got a wrapped chain um cool cool yeah i just want to chill i just want to chill while everything else on earth is also able to chill and we're all chilling in a way that's nice and sympathetic, but cool. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to hop out. Hopefully that answered enough ZBrush questions. You got to see some cool stuff. Maybe you didn't know what it was or how it was done. And uh, food for thought. You know, these are all just techniques. You can start using these techniques. As you're creating, you might be able to go back and go, oh, yeah, now I want to, okay, what was that thing you did? You called it this, and then you can go and look it up and dig in deeper. Cool.